bring it in, broski. Ow. Sorry, man. It didn't hurt. You can't hurt me. Sorry, laddie. Yeah, sticks and stones might break my bones, but words can hurt me. Actually, they can I'm hurt. a very sensitive man. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm very sensitive. You'd probably prefer to be hit than said something nasty about you, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. At least if when I'm hit, at I'm least just the bruise will heal. Yeah. But my but my if you say very strong words against me, my heart's um, soft. Yeah. I'm, I'm very soft. Did you say? Softy. Sorry. Softy. Mm. Bruiser is what I prefer uh, to be. Uh, no, no. Bruise no. easy. Yeah, bruise easy. <laughs> <laughs> my heart bruise easy. Assalamu alaikum, guys. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to episode thirty-five of FG. Thirty-five. 35. It's 5 or 40, 15 or 50. Don't know what that means, you mathematician. I'm miles ahead of you. Yeah, you are. Sam, you're back, man. Welcome back. I don't, I'm don't. i not going to welcome you back, actually, because who? you don't welcome someone to their, where they belong, do you? This is your thing. You welcome yourself it's our, back. It's our thing, yeah. It's, yeah, nice it's, to, it's good to be back. Thank you for coming back from Dubai. No problem. Um, I'm sorry about not being here last week. That's fine. No problem. You've got to do what you've got to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're back. Alhamdulillah. Back in London, shooting freshly grounded on, yeah. a, on a Thursday evening. And who have you got? Should we go for the sponsors and then, and then, and then let's talk about our very special guest that we have. Um, guys, this episode is brought to you by the by 59. I can't just say there's many 59 cups. It's, uh, as you can see all over the screen. Uh, 59, 59 uh, coffee and juice bar. Um, it's an amazing cafe. Got fresh food, fresh snacks. Yeah, everything's vegetarian. Or uh, there's some fish options as well, actually. Uh, fresh food, fresh snacks, fresh coffee, fresh juice. And uh, it's in Stanhope Road, 59 Stanhope Road in St. Albans, Hertfordshire. Listen, I would turn around and I would say to you guys, hey, listen, if you're in the Hertfordshire area, don't forget to pop by to St. Albans. But I'm not going to say that, Sam. You know why? Because there's been some people visiting from all over the world. Sorry, did you say country or did you say world, phase? Big Daddy Face said, "World, been people visiting from all over the world, so. all over the place, all over the world." So, listen, if you're anywhere, anywhere right now, make that intention. Head over to Fifty Nine and uh, grab yourself a fresh coffee, grab yourself a fresh juice, um, grab yourself some fresh snacks. Maybe have a have a meeting in there. Do your thing. There's a couple plugs. There's some Wi-Fi. You know, there's some facilities. You could you could be there for a good amount of time and not actually need to. Uh, Leave ever really mm. until the shop closes. Yeah. yeah, and if you're obviously buying things as you go along, etc. Yeah, um, fifty nine coffee and juice bar fifty five zero underscore n i n e on Instagram. Head over to fifty nine. Um, request head over head over to fifty nine this month. Quote freshly grounded. And what do you get yourself, Sam? You're gonna get one pound of anything you buy. Nice, I like that. That's pretty good. Anything, you, could buy, yeah. you could buy an espresso and pay peanuts for it. Yeah, that, I, mean, I like that a lot. Remember, you have to quote freshly grounded at the yeah. counter. That's very generous. That's it. it is generous. Yeah, you get yourself a, like you said, an espresso, you're basically paying pennies. Yeah, you literally are paying 100 pennies if you, you follow that. Yeah. It's great. I like that a lot. Yeah, this is a pound off everything. Everything that we sell in there off. will be one pound less if you quote freshly grounded. You get a really good deal on a vanilla energy bill, which is my favourite product from 59. It's true, you get a very good deal. That is a good deal, isn't it? Yeah, I think maybe I should double check that. Actually. Yeah, you should, you should regret that, but it's, too, it's done. You've said Fine. it, you stick to your word. One pound off for this whole month of November. And you know what? Last month, a lot of people got tote bags. Really? Yeah, a lot I of people that. got tote bags. I love yeah. that. Alhamdulillah, so we're almost out. Almost finished tote bags. I was also very humbled when I was traveling. Uh, um, I, I, in the last weeks, I've been to um, Liverpool and Dubai. <laughs> the same two categories, didn't we? Say? But anyway, they're the two places I went to outside of home. And in both places, people love Freshly Grounded. Man. I got good. such a good response, such a good feedback. Like People are saying such amazing things about it and it's so humbling. And it's a shame actually, Sam, because I don't show you these emails and stuff. But if I did, you'd be so humbled by it, man. Like Some of the stuff is, is insane. Um, also brought to you by Zaha, IZAHA.com, Arabic style caps, hats, Jumpers, t-shirts, um, stick the code word freshly grounded on the website is aha.com. You get yourself 25, uh, sorry, 20% off uh, anything. 25% off. I said 20% off. Okay. Um, anything off the website. Lastly, brought to you by Flavor, F-L-A-V-R, Flavor.co. Head over to the website. It's up and running. Your one-stop shop for social content creation, uh, social media marketing. Head over there. And guys, Sam, who have we got on this show? Mr... 
Josh Lamonica. We are joined by Mr. Josh Lamonica. Josh has been on episode. Josh has been on podcast before in its early days, uh, almost a year ago now. Maybe like seven months ago, eight months ago. What number was it? Did I think it was early on, man? Maybe like five or six. Really? Or something. Yeah, early, yeah? early, early, early. Wow. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I, it feels like that. Um, Josh is. Uh, Sam's business partner in Men's Buyer. Um, Sam is one half of Men's Buyer and... Uh, he's my business partner. He's my friend. He's my brother. He's my mentor. He's just a general good guy. Yeah. And he's got a, a number of accolades, uh, one of which is Educator of the Year 2017, um, internationally re- known. Um, a, he's a teacher all over the world. Uh, and, and, and very, very motivational, as you'll find in this episode, we talk about a lot of things. We, t- we speak about, you know, um, in the current events, we speak about tips of how to save money. Um, we speak about Josh, uh, uh, Josh traveling and how he finds traveling. Um, the fact that he spends a lot of time on planes, sometimes more time on a plane than he does on the, on the ground in that country. Um, how he finds traveling, his goals, his short-term goals, his long-term goals, his mantra. Um, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of motivation, a lot of, um, enlightening in this episode a lot of things that will make you think a deep conversations in it sam yeah it's deep really i really enjoyed it and it really a lot of the conversations really hit me hard man um you understand why i kind of refer back to having conversations with josh when he comes out of some it's deep it's good isn't it very very deep yeah, very just, good. you think differently it's good you do and it's important man exercise your mind mm. so without any further ado guys body. sorry and your body exercise your body as well <laughs> do you know what I've actually been off gym for like the last like month or so and I felt really last horrible month. really bad yeah for like last month or so like I've been like, really, nah bro I've, and I've been ho- I felt horrible really what's your diet been like horrible really bro I feel horrible I feel like I <laughs> like honestly I'm sounding like a girl now but honestly it's not been good yeah, for your best I'm hitting the uh, gym today for the first time I'm bringing back to the with the big boys yeah inshallah without any further ado guys Sam why don't you enjoy this episode hey. what, what I said why don't you enjoy the episode go on just drop it down low what do you mean I don't know guys this is episode 35 of Joshua Monica this is Freshly Grounded I am Sam Palmer this is Faisal Chowdhury enjoy let's get into it and welcome to Freshly Grounded the brand new podcast by best friends Faisal and Sam huh I welcome I said welcome to Freshly Grounded after that bit the brand new podcast. And after that bit? My best friends, face with Sam. Really? We are live and we are back in London. You might be thinking to yourself, I saw you guys a few days ago in Dubai. I saw you guys a few days ago in Dublin. I saw you guys a few days ago in Liverpool. I saw you guys, I thought you were in Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it, is that it? For the past two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? Brazil? I might Depends if you're you including in Josh. Yeah, <laughs> including Josh, there's probably a few places. I might have seen you guys in Brazil. Um, but I'm we're back. We're in the UK. Man, it's, uh, Sam, to me, it's felt like, you know, like the royal family, like it's hard to get them all in the same room sometimes. Yeah. I'm not saying we're anything like the royal family. Um, but it was, it's, I mean, this is the first time we've been in a room together for a very long time. It's good to see you. Alhamdulillah, good to see you too. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, Alhamdulillah. I'm, and yourself? I'm very, very well. And I'm even better because we have a very special guest today. Um, we are joined by, well, we are joined by a world-renowned, I don't want to say Barber because last time I said that and it doesn't, it doesn't encapsulate it, does it, Sam? Go on, start the again, go Barber. On. Forget <laughs> Barber, say men's hairstylist. When world-renowned men's hairstylist and educator, Josh Lemonico. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. How are you doing, Josh? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> you? I'm good, thank you. Josh, did you know that um, you are the first ever guest on Freshly Grounded that has appeared for a second time on our show? Excellent. Fantastic. So, uh, my question to you is, what is... Lightning mo- does strike twice, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> my, my, my question... It's already started. <laughs> <laughs> my question... Your beard looks much darker, Sam. All right, carry on. Sorry, is that... Is it really? Mm, okay. Listen, <laughs> uh, my question to you is, Josh, what is more beloved to you? The... Um, Honour of being the f- first ever person to be on Freshly Grounded twice or the honour of being Educator of the Year in men's hairstyling? I mean, we all know the answer, let's be honest. You don't even have to answer it, actually. Yeah, I mean, seeing as they're in different continents, I think we can uh, agree that that is both definitely two different kettles of fish. Mm-hmm. So I think they both have a similar honour. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's a good so, answer. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> 
Fantastic answer. I'm out here for peace, so wow, how's cool. that? I'm very happy, I'm very Welcome. happy with that answer. Welcome. There's many ways you could have gone. <laughs> well. uh, Sam, man, so, so, so last week, we what happened last, right, so last week last week you were in Dubai weren't you I was yeah um, so what happened last week is just to give like a little round up of what's been happening the last couple of weeks since we haven't been together um, our last podcast together which was two weeks ago I, think, I believe it was with Hamza Zortiz is that yeah, the one that's correct yeah yeah we had the episode together and then because of me we couldn't do the episode next week and so we, we tried to like arrange an episode um, on the weekend which is, is difficult for both of us for so many reasons Um and it just didn't end up happening. And subhanAllah, I, I learned a really big lesson that weekend because I was with Onali. I was traveling. I was in, at an event with him when it, I found out that we couldn't go ahead with that episode. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest because for some reason, weirdly, this time I was more stressed than regular, than normal about it. Like, no, I'm, I, I, it, normally, I've, you know, in the past, if we have not been able to do an episode, I've been like so calm about it. I was definitely not angry at you at any, at any point, but I'm, I'm saying I was a bit stressed about not getting an episode out. And then what had happened is I was like, you know what, it's fine. So I'm driving on Lee and I'm stressing, I'm stressing. And I'm ringing all of these people who um, who have said that if, you know, there comes a time where I need a, like a temporary co-host, they would they would be up for it. So this one guy called Noor, this other guy called um, uh, Jibreel. And last time they both couldn't make it. And they both kind of said that if it's on a different time, we'd 100% be up for it. So I was like, okay, alhamdulillah, it's a weekend. They'll definitely not be at work, et cetera, et cetera. Let me ring them. And bro, surprisingly... Uh, both brothers couldn't make it for really for really like extenuating circumstances like ne- generally they could always make it on a weekend and they really really want to be on the podcast as well and but they had genuine excuse like not excuses reasons why they couldn't make it and i started getting i was getting so stressed and so thinking of it that only was like bro look relax don't worry like etc etc uh, i'm gonna have to switch out uh this yeah because your mic stands broken yeah, she's going. right let me switch it out let me switch it out okay sorry about that guys we had some issues with josh's mic we're back um so as i was saying I, I was more stressed than usual for some reason. But I think it was just because I had, we, I think me and you, Sam, had decided that from now on, kind of no matter what, we'll still try and get an episode out regardless of like what it takes kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And so with that in mind, I really wanted to get an episode out. I really wanted to get an episode out. And even the people who normally would have said that they were up for it, they had um, their own things going on. And so only speaking to me in the car on the way back from this event, and I'm like zoning off, like stressing. And I, to the point where I actually took the wrong exit on the motorway, ended up on the wrong motorway because I'm thinking about this instead. And I end up uh, like having to go for like eight miles or something and then just to go do a U-turn and come back because I made the wrong exit. So anyway, that was just like a point to show how like kind of it was playing on my mind. Yeah. And now looking back at it, how Allah played it out, because that didn't go through, it led me to be like, you know what? Let me message this one brother. It's a very big stretch. But let me just message one brother and see if he can get Tim Humble on the podcast. SubhanAllah, it, he, it, straight away he was like, bro, it shouldn't be a problem. Next thing you know, he sent me started Tim Humble's number and uh, the podcast happened. And if it wasn't for all of those events in the, happening, that wouldn't, it wouldn't have resulted to an amazing thing like having started Tim Humble on a podcast. Incredible, man. And that's just like, that taught me such a big lesson about Qadr and taught yeah, me a yeah, lesson yeah. about like stressing about something that's not in your control. Yeah. And if I told myself the whole time, there's a reason, there's a reason, there's a reason, which only was telling mm. me. And if I like now look in hindsight, there was such a g- good reason why even the people who would always be up for it, even weren't able to attend, even on a weekend. Allah. You can plan. And Allah plans. He's the best of planners. He is the best of planners. That's very good. And it was an enjoyable podcast with him. Oh, it, was, it, was lovely, it was amazing yeah. if you listen to the episode you, you just hear me saying like okay cool okay okay yeah, yep. yeah. subhanallah a bit, and I was asking one or two questions here and there but it was majority of him because I was just listening to him I was in awe yeah he's kind of every word he says is valuable as well isn't it he doesn't mm. just yeah very li- nice to listen to man very yeah, nice man. to listen to if, it, if anybody's like listening to this episode and hasn't listened to that it's the previous episode episode 34 it's definitely worth um, giving it a listen nice to be back yeah. in Dubai as well it was nice to be back in Dubai but what about you guys so you guys hit, hit up the old island today Josh I haven't congratulated you uh, in person or have I no I haven't I believe for your brand new store in Ireland congratulations thank you very much I mean I mean uh, how does it feel man yeah it feels fantastic it feels uh you know it's been an extremely long and patient wait for for Glenn McGoldrick himself um but I'm just glad to be you know a part of his dream a part of his success really so that's no, been really good. Have you cut hair there? 
Uh, I have, yeah. Yeah, I would have been one of the first two as well, which is uh, an honor as well. Nice, man. And so do you guys plan to visit there regularly or? Yeah, it definitely. It's, it's, it's not far, is it? Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's only an hour's flight. So to be able to go there, it's just it's like getting on a bus ride now instead of being on the road, you're in the air. So that's, that's and, the relation. And Glenn's always come back here as well, right? Glenn's always back and forth as well, yeah. Ever since we've opened the shop, it's been like every every two weeks we've seen Glenn anyway. Mm. Oh, and I think it will continue to be like that. We continue, we have like quite a tight relationship and um, it, we've, we've got things booked back and forth. So we'll probably be seeing Glenn for every two weeks over the next long long period of time, which isn't a bad thing. What's this sauce that I keep seeing every time you go to Dublin? That's a good you question. Everyone asks me about yeah. it. It's the charcoal, the grey thing. Yeah, the grey. Yeah. Do you know what it is? Nah. I don't you know really know what it is either. It's like a cheesy sauce. But it's grey. Yeah, I know. And this, when, I, when people DM me and say, what's that sauce? Must have a little charcoal in it. And it hasn't though. No. It's like a perfect, it's the same grey as the men's like a, grey. Maybe like a blue yeah, cheese. Yeah, that's why. Because I know, it looks like paint from the shop. On Charlie's snap yeah, Instagram, yeah, yeah. when you first went out there, he Instagram storied Janelle eating that um, pizza off with that sauce and it and looks it, like paint yeah it looked like the paint <clears throat> behind him and I actually yeah, but I can assure you it's not it's actually a really nice like almost cheesy like a blue cheese piece. isn't it melted yeah. blue cheese or something sounds great I don't know Josh because the actual colour is like a perfect grey I don't know how they achieve it and when I when I do answer someone on DM saying oh it's like a cheesy sauce and I say how has it got that, that colour and I say I do not know probably taken our men's bar flyers and and churned it up in the cheese yeah it's possible it's nice very nice sauce have you tried it no I haven't no it's nice who was who went out this time? So um, myself, Mahi, and Midge went out on Tuesday morning, very early. Three of us. Um, I'm smiling because I remember that story of Mahi. Which one? Of him sleeping in the car. Yeah. So I saw over the. I've been travelling for two days with Mahi, mm. um, and I've seen him fall asleep and snore probably about six or seven times during that time. You're he, used to that. Though. You travel so much with him. Yeah, he, he, if, he's, if he's in a car or plane or anywhere, he's, he's still. If he's not watching a TV series on his phone, he'll fall asleep. And when he goes to sleep, the, 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 the sounds he make are loud. So yesterday we had a three, three, and, three hours and 15 minute journey from Dublin to Belfast. Yeah. And he spent the most of that time trying not to fall asleep because he knows when he goes to sleep, he snores so, so loudly and it's, it's crazy. So he kind of like had light... <laughs> Light, light snoring yeah, for like three hours, but did yeah. Did you share a hotel room with him? Absolutely not. Never again, right? Never again. Impossible. But I did share an apartment with him, and he's, he had his own room, and he was further down the hall. And I woke up just before fudger time, so quite early I woke up, and I could hear him snoring from, from down, down a corridor, because he hadn't, he hadn't closed the door that he was sleeping in. And I went and looked at him, and he left the light on, and he was just, yeah. Was, like, was <laughs> the, light was, the light was on, the door was open, he was in his clothes, and he was sleeping. And I said, why are you doing that? He didn't know. <laughs> Did and you then, he, then he went to sleep after the fudger and left the, the light on still. <laughs> Just cra crazy. Maybe he's scared of the dark. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Young, isn't he? he is, could be scared yeah, of the dark. Yeah. I don't think he's scared of the dark. So any chance for 59 in uh, well, Dublin? Well, yeah, this is the thing. And so me, we, the three of us went over and then on the Wednesday morning, D came out, D from 59. Oh, really? D came out, Gianni came out. Wow. Yeah, so Gianni did um, hair cutting. So he was cutting and going through some haircuts with the boys, which was great. Uh, Dee was there to potentially look at some 59 options, which was exciting. Um, and it was good. So there was a whole pack of us out there. It was good. Nice. And I saw a um, story of you and Midge tag teaming on Glenn's hair. That's right. I just shaped him up and was blow drying and was just got the dryer as well. Cool, Nothing too man. exciting. But it was good. It was a good trip. I love Ireland. Big up the Irish listeners because Ireland is great. I really, really like Ireland everywhere. Mm. Got a lot of time for Ireland. Yeah, same. It's great. So, Faisal, do you know the connection to why Men's Bar is connected to Dublin and Ireland? Other, do you know the roots of that? Not other than Glenn is Irish. But where, did Glenn, where did Glenn come from? I don't know. So, I'll let Josh tell you, but... Sure. So, um, I was doing a lot of haircuts in Ireland Um from Twitter days when I used to cut one some guy from TV and um, all the Irish guys used to watch that television program mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I was cutting this man's hair and and then all the Irish crowd started following me on Twitter and one of them just popped up and asked me if I would come over to Ireland to cut him and a few of his friends hair so I ended up going over to Fibsborough in Ireland and had booked out maybe 10-15 people to cut their hair and then eventually I started attracting 
barbers and I was cutting barbers hair and then eventually after speaking with these guys they said you know why don't you do a course here and I, went, and I eventually did uh, a, an education course in Dublin and this was about four and a half years ago now and on that course one of the members was the original guy who contacted me Craig Murtar and his friend Glenn McGoldrick so I'd had a relation with these two guys since the course as we do because our educational courses are very personal and Craig was very talented and I noticed this on the course and Glenn had just started cutting hair um, at that time as well because he was influenced by his friend Craig so after some time we opened up Men's Bias Salon and Craig and Glenn were still following us from Twitter and you know loving what we do and loving the brand and then eventually as time went on you know Glenn was getting better and better and then he decided that he wanted to attempt to come and work for us. In the meantime, me and Sam were sort of still looking for people to come and join us and we decided that we want someone from out of the UK or possibly far from St Albans, our community, to come and work for us. And, you know, I kind of suggested to Craig, why don't you come and work for us? You know, why don't you come over and, and, and start something here? And he wasn't too keen at the time, but then his mate Glenn was still very apparent in the DMs um, messaging us to see if he could come over for an interview as we were accepting interviews at this point. And I wasn't particularly interested in Glenn at the time because I knew that Craig was much more talented and such. But what Glenn had was this amazing drive and commitment and vision to be aligned with us and be a part of us. So I said to Sam, you know, I've got this guy from Ireland who wants to come down and have a chat and Sam kind of didn't necessarily take me seriously and I didn't necessarily mm -hmm. take Glenn so much seriously until the day it came down when I kind of fixed the date with Glenn to come down and you know not thinking if he would show up or not and then he eventually did and said you know I'm half an hour away and this was a Sunday morning and I said to this, I said to Sam look mate this you know remember that bloke that I was telling you about the geezer from Ireland and he goes oh yeah I said yeah well he's actually on his way he's going to be about 15 minutes you reckon you can get down here? He was like, oh, what, now? I said, well, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean... That's you know. exactly how Sam speaks as well, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's, oh, that's yeah. it. It was kind of like, it was a bit half-hearted. <laughs> and so I didn't really alarm Sam in, in the way that, you know, like, oh, we've got this guy, he's coming tomorrow, you need to be here at da 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 I just mm -hmm. thought, oh, we'll just see what happens first. I'll go down and if he comes in, then I'll, then I'll call Sam. So eventually he came down, came down with his missus and um, he came and spoke to us. And I think after about 10 or 15 minutes or so of speaking to him, we could see that this gentleman had had the commitment to come over and you know kind of sacrifice his, his life at home and his clientele that he had and his obviously his you know consistent wage that he had and be away from his family to come and work with us and you know for us that was uh, quite an eye opener to see how committed someone could be to our brand that we just built from nothing mm -hmm. you know so we eventually decided to to take him on um, given the fact that his long-term vision was to eventually go back to Dublin and open up a men's spire there. And was no, this still about four years ago? This was about two and a half years okay. ago now. So but he did say in his in the interview that he wants to take men's spire back to right. Dublin, didn't wow. he? He made, he made it very so that clear was, that's what he want, That's wow. what his mission was. It wasn't like, I want to live here forever. He goes, I want to get a men's spire, take it back to Dublin. Subhan and we were still a small it. company at this time. We were definitely becoming noticed and recognised but we were still a small company, so I think we were kind of generally quite humbled to the to the point where we saw this man want to come over and sacrifice his life from from his hometown, and then eventually, you know, join and align his vision with ours, and eventually go back to his hometown and operate from there. So I think we was extremely impressed by that, and that's how Glenn came into existence with mm. Menspire. It's so crazy that it. It aligns so perfectly with you, you, both of you guys and your guys' vision because one thing that you can take from both Josh and Sam, both of you guys, when I when you follow you on, on, on socials or, or you follow you physically around for a bit, you know you notice that one of the kind of mantras or, or, or ways you live is that set goals and achieve them. And you you guys are all you guys seem both very um, goal oriented, have long term goals, have short term goals, aim to achieve them. And what I can see from the outside perspective is that not only do you guys set goals, but you do achieve them. And so for you to meet someone who on the first day had a goal, a long term goal, and now seeing him achieve it, how does that make you guys feel? I think it's just um, 
it's really apparent that if you set a goal and you allocate time, then you will achieve it, given the fact that if you put your hard work and your determination in. You know, if you don't have a goal, or if you don't have um, a destination as such, then you're going to end up in the middle of nowhere. Mm. And there's no fulfillment in that. Do you know what I mean? What makes people happy is progression. And it's something that I say quite often on our courses, is that if you progress in your life, you're going to be fulfilled, whatever it may be. If you're in the gym and you get fitter, you're going to be happier. Mm -hmm. If your diet gets cleaner, you're going to be ha become happier. And that is a constitute of progression. So whatever it may be in your life, if you progress, you become more fulfilled. So in a nutshell, that, that achievement of working towards your goal is just a constant fulfillment of you know, becoming happy and achieving whatever you've set out to achieve. It's interesting that you mentioned that you mentioned that you say some of these things in your courses. It takes me back to when our, me and Sam were having a discussion about you very early on, perhaps before even our first episode that we did with you. And he told me, he said he, he was basically kind of describing you. And um, he said, one thing you need to know about Josh is he knows kind of what he wants, like to, uh, where he wants to go. And he work hard to achieve what he wants to, where he wants to get to. And um, from what I, from the little knowledge I know, it was uh, one of those things was to be able to travel the world and to educate. Mm. And we mentioned, we spoke about that on the last podcast. We won't go into the, that t in too much detail. But what I do want to ask that we didn't touch upon is that from the snippets that I see of you educating and of you doing your courses, it almost comes across. I might be wrong. Pl please do let me know. It almost comes across as if. Not only you teach people how to cut hair, but you are like somewhat of an inspirational like talker. Not you're not not giving life advice, but it comes across as if you take on the responsibility that there are people listening to you, and you take it very seriously, and you try and give the most you can to them, and that includes not just being able to cut hair. Is that a, is that a, um, a valid or realistic uh, assumption to make? Yeah, yeah. Because if you was going to refine the question. The question may be in not only do you cut hair or teach people how to cut hair, but momentarily you teach them how to think, how to be as a professional. Right. Yeah. So, and the way that the concept in which we teach or deliver at the Men's Bar Academy is more so about enabling people to discover how to think and not what to think. For example, if I give you this and this is your pair of scissors right if you take that and this is your comb you can cut hair mm -hmm. there's nothing saying that you can't go and cut someone's hair but the way in which you do it will be totally different from the way that i do it right and the way that we try to develop people is by a mind map and it's training the mind how to think as opposed to being told what to think and that goes for loads of common scenarios in, in life as well. So it's not just so much about delivering people or delivering education about this haircut or that haircut, but it's about training the mind to be able to think in a way that will help you achieve your destination in terms of, let's say, your end result of your haircut. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so it seems that the, the goal with that, and it, it does resonate because it seems like this has been like a really common theme recently in like... Um, podcast episodes we've had or, or, or chats that I've had with other people in that you know the whole idea of uh, teach people how to fish not uh, don't just give them fish right, or to, to eat. Right. and um, and that's what Hamza Zorti said last week and it's what surprisingly me and Sam mentioned two weeks ago so this is like the third episode in a row where this concept has ar arisen and also me and Omar actually went to um, a few weeks ago we went to seek some Islamic advice from from a teacher about something and he uh, one of the responses he gave to one of the questions is no sorry at, right at the end of like our consultation or discussion with him, he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a course uh, that I want you guys to come to that is going to outline some of this kind of stuff. Um, because what I would love is, I love people being self-sufficient. So you don't have to come to me with every question, but if I kind of teach you how to think uh, about these kind of scenarios, then you can also make your own judgments. And so mm -hmm. Islamically, mm -hmm. not Islamically, secu in, in secular studies, anything, it seems like being self-sufficient is the aim. Or, mm -hmm. or either being self-sufficient yourself or teaching other people how to be self-sufficient. 
you yourself also seem like a very self-sufficient, self-sufficient person. Is that what you would describe yourself as? And is that something that comes naturally to you? Or do you have to tell yourself, don't depend on others, Josh. Don't depend on others. Do this yourself. Do it yourself. Or is it just natural? Are you just an independent, self-sufficient person by as an innate as an innate personality feature? I think um, naturally it's in my inclination and I think it's in a lot of people's predisposition to be inquisitive. Okay. You know, it's like when you're younger and you're constantly asking your mum why, you know, and I think that particular question why gets to the root of most of your answers. And naturally I've always been inquisitive, which means that if I'm curious, I'm going to find out answers. Okay. And... If you want to find out answers, it means that you're pretty passionate about education and you want to become knowledgeable. So with that being said, you know, it kind of drives me to seek knowledge all the time, you know. I've, I've never thought about that, like that. That really surprises me, but it makes so much sense because I would almost assume in my I would almost think that if somebody is self-sufficient, it's the opposite. They're not inquisitive because not they don't care about things but they don't need to inquire about things but the way you put it it makes so much more sense in that if someone is self-sufficient it actually makes sense that they're very inquisitive because what they're doing is it's just that the way they find the information out is different instead of asking people they're so passionate about being inquisitive that they're going to put it in their own hands to to figure it out and i've never thought about it like that it's like the four stages of learning you know you start off being unconsciously competent and then you're consciously competent before being, you know, consciously competent. And then eventually you're unconsciously competent. So you start off not knowing that you don't know. And eventually you're doing something that you know without even thinking about it. It's like driving. Mm-hmm. When you start driving, you are being conscious that you're in control of the car, the gear stick, the steering wheel, yeah. the indicators, the clutch, the, um, the, the push, the pedal, the accelerator. So eventually, when you've mastered the art of driving, you don't think about it. You just do. And that's it. And that's the difference between, you know, the, the four stages of learning being level one, you know, unconsciously incompetent. And then level four, which is that you are unconsciously competent. Mm-hmm. And that's the four stages of learning. Not so what ha- I, mean. I, I know exactly <laughs> what you mean. Um, so h- how does you guys then, so Sam and Josh being a partnership to an extent, uh, how does it help? Have, how, how is it? What's the dynamic like between you both? Because uh, I, I've said to Sam in many times before that I, I look up to him in many ways and I learn a lot from him. And so is your kind of relationship, you're just constantly both learning off each other or you're on the same wavelength and you're kind of like, um, you know, constantly, uh, what, what is your guys' relationship like? Well, I, I'm very intrigued. Sam? Josh can speak. This is, I, I always speak on this podcast. Okay. This is the time. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Josh's we haven't, you haven't even spoken yet, sir. I know, I'm, I, this is Josh's time. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Well, I would say we have a beautiful relationship. I, I'd say that we have a beautiful balance. It wavers as it does. That's what a relationship is. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what we have between us is trust, you know, and I think that that goes a long way. And, you know, it's that balance that keeps us steady, it keeps us firm, and it keeps us pushing forward as well. You know, I know the value that Sam brings to the table. He knows the value that I bring to the table. And I think that's what keeps us and, and our team loyal and attracted to and, and, and other people attracted to us is the fact that we can offer this kind of mentorship, you know, that we've built over the years. And, you know, we're still learning ourselves. Mm. We, we, we've, di- we've had to discover a lot. We've had to go through some faults, some fines and, and, and whatever else it is to get to where we are today. And we're still learning. Um, but what we have learned is something that which we can pass on to our young team. And it goes to show exactly for what Glenn has you know, succeeded in right now is, um, you know, it's a mere result of, of our hard work and, and what we've put together. So, yeah. Beautifully said. Do you have anything to add to it? No, I agree. It's, uh, it's definitely a balance. Um, and the way we, we run our businesses, it's... You know, Josh. Josh has spent a long, a lot of time um, all over the world doing doing incredible things in Brazil, in America, Australia, everywhere. Guys on stage. You see, you see his social media. Incredible, absolutely incredible. Now it's beautiful that he's across the other side of the world, 
promoting Men's Bar, promoting our whole brand, our system. And then meanwhile, I'm back in the UK where we have our where we have our bread and butter, our businesses which generate you know generate our our pocket money as such. So it's lovely that I have I don't have a desire to do what Josh does, and I'm sure vice versa. So it's just alhamdulillah, naturally. Our, our, what we want to achieve it's, 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 it's all played out perfectly with the business we've got and where we want to put the business so I don't want to spend months away um, doing what Josh does and Josh probably doesn't want to spend months in St Albans being in the salon like, like what I do so it's a very it's, it's worked out perfectly and you know inshallah over the next few years it's going to be more of the same thing just both fulfilling roles um, that we need to fulfil to, to push forward with, with our business um, and you know, without one each, each other, we wouldn't be where we are today. So it's 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 a beautiful balance, and it's, it's it happened with no conversation, no plan. It's just it's organic, and our whole business and everything's been very organic. We 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 do do the means, we do the hard work, um, but considering it's been four years since we actually set up Menspire, Alhamdulillah, it's it's gotten so much bigger than than I, I thought it would. In, in the it's exceeded this, our expectations. Absolutely. We, we, I think we, we humbly ex- expected big things to come from what, what, what our initial plan was mm. because we knew that we were, we were hardworking guys. We wanted to achieve what we set out to do. So we, I think we both knew that it would be, it would be, a big, it would be a, something big would come from it. But I think it was, it was lovely just growing out of our first shop straight away. I think that was the, the first kind of tick thinking, okay, cool, we can run a busy shop. Which is the first and foremost what, with what we do. We need to ensure that we've got a salon that's, you know, a busy shop before we go international anywhere and and, and teach it. We need to make sure that the you know the foundations are right. So we, we were chuffed to see so early on that the small shop got busy. So we had to get a bigger shop, and then just from there, just alhamdulillah, more and more blessings came our way, um, and we're just yeah we're, we're growing it, and you know hopefully next year we're going to grow it even more and and forever forever just keep growing it. I think the key balance between myself and Sam is that. I'm, I'm a risk and Sam's reserved, and I oh think really? I think that that has played a, a mm. major balance in terms of how much we've learned. You know, I'm risky because you know, dunya's it's not much to me. Do you know what I mean? And mm. I know that, and I know that deep within my heart. So I might have lost us some money, and next thing you know, we've learned from it. Do you know what I mean? Whereas Sam, in some scenarios, has been more reserved, and you know, held me back from doing a decision that possibly would have went wrong or whatever else and you know some things have paid off so in that case it's been Mm. a positive so i think that balance between you know risk and reserve has played a a key part in our relationship to to helping us progress and growing and you know furthering ourselves in knowledge and in business do you know what that reminds me of the fact that you guys compliment each other it's it's slightly off topic because it's more uh, uh, about marriage from what i know but um I was at a wedding yesterday and one of the um, things that came up on the TV screen at the wedding was the Quran ayah that says, um, and we created you in pairs. And one of the brothers there was kind of um, explaining the tafsir about the ayah kind of and explaining the ayah. And what he had said is that the word that is used for pairs in Arabic in that context, pairs is probably not the best um, way of describing it. And perhaps a better way of describing it is like the word compliment, because he says that when you understand the meaning of the mm, ayah, what mm. he's actually saying is that the way Allah has created, like for example, spouses, but also perhaps, um, and I don't know, I don't want to add my own tafsir. Mm. What he was tell, telling me is what um, that when Allah when Allah says we create you in pairs, the 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 meaning behind the ayah goes into the fact that. This it's person more of a compliment, yeah. Compliments this person this compliments this person. This person compliments this. this Rather person than we create it to you, do you know what I mean? Sure. This person brings out the best in this person. This person brings out the best in this person. It's a comp- they they compliment Compl- each other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's so that's what you look at. Yeah. yeah. Right, listen, let's take a quick Maghrib break yep. because I'm conscious of time and then uh, we'll get straight into it. When we come back, uh, Josh, um, I want to uh, ask you about Brazil because I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of, uh, a buzz about Josh Lemonica in Brazil. I need to know what's happening because this was after our last episode. So I want to know what's happening in Brazil. Uh, we've got some current events coming up. Uh, Red's got some current events ready for us. We'll go to a couple of different things uh, after Maghrib. Josh Lemonica back in the building. Josh Lemonica still in the building. His name is Josh. Last name Lemonica. Oh, he's breaking the set. Wow. Sound like That's it. Put it back. That's it, Red. Better down there, Dream, yeah? Yeah. Moving. Yeah, moving. 
Yeah, we good. Any water left on the table? Yeah. How's that? Fresh? Would you like some more? Yeah, freshly. Yeah. No, 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 I don't want to put any trouble. Um, freshly grounded. Freshly grounded. It's grounded fresh. Grounded fresh. Fifty nine. Responsible. Never get stressed. Never distressed. Always blessed. Always blessed. Stressed but not ble- no blessed but not stressed. Stressed, they no. say I'm well blessed dressed. but too Rain. blessed to be stressed. Feasible. But realistically, I'm always stressed. Um, I am blessed. Yeah. So well dressed. Sometimes you dress well-dressed. very well, and I my aim in the morning is to just not be naked, <laughs> which is why I'm never coordinated colourly. You are today, to be fair. You're blue. Blue. What's a blue? Yeah. I mean, he's a black. Cause it's not really cool. So we had a nice Margaret break. Prayed our salah. We ba- we're back in the building. We never left the building. The building had never been left. We just prayed literally just over there. Yeah. We didn't even leave the room. I went to do my wudu. That's true. Cool. So I flew back from Belfast yesterday yeah. and, and the plane was like a size of a private jet. Really? I think you would have found it interesting. Was it, I don't, Ryanair? it was Ryanair. No, it was it was organized by Ryanair, but it's like a private the actual the actual government fund this particular flight. Fancy, Mr. Sa- S. Empire. No, 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 nothing. It's, just no, it's normal, but... Flying private jets? No, no, I didn't fly a private jet. Yeah. But check this out. <laughs> <laughs> check this out. I have to actually... I'm, I'm seeing the issue, man. I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm going to block you guys from seeing each other, but I have to speak That's fine. This. Sorry. But this, this aeroplane, yeah, yep. was the... Like, it's a... It was a normal flight that I booked out of Derry to London Stansted, mm-hmm. and you couldn't even walk... You don't have Derry no more, do you, Sam? Oh, so you didn't go to Belfast International? No, I flew from Derry. Oh, same. Yeah, Belfast is an hour from him. Derry right. International that's is 15 what, minutes. Yeah, that's why, yeah, yeah. No, literally, literally, Derry, the airport as well, was the small... Did, did you see my um, story yesterday? Mahi going through security. Thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah I did. That, 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 it was just like... It was just like the most ba- one of the most basic airports I've ever been to. Wow. Which was nice. It was still had it had character, but it was just like a... Just a it very, was, very how simple... Many, how many uh, seats were on that plane, roughly? No more than... Th- Thirty. Wow. Yeah. So like a it was small, two, but two in a row, or how so. This it? is this is why it was so nice. My seat was just it was just one to the side, and then the, then then there was a strip. There's a walkway in the middle. So my seat was there, walkway in the middle, and then there was two. Okay. So, so there was there, there was these single seats, so like which actually made it a lot more comfortable. Because I think one of the problems of an uncomfortable flight is when you're stuck in that little area with people around you. Someone else is on your yeah, resting the elbow there, and you've got the next man over there. Like it's quite. So it was two. Space one. Yeah, but being that one, it was like you had, you. It was Five. great. It was nice. And but when you walk down 15? to the toilet, was at the very back. There's one toilet at the very back of the flight, very back of the plane. And when you walk down, I had to crouch all the way down because really? it was such a small plane. And they had to move people around before we took off because. So was it like maybe ten seats back, in total? No, more than that. More than okay. ten seats. More than ten seats. It's probably about thirty people on the flight. Maybe I don't know how many people you could carry. How many could you carry on a normal flight? Depends how many. Oh, hunt some. Well, I, I flew when I flew to uh, think uh, Dubai recently. It was like one of those planes that has uh, two st- floor, two floors. stories. Yeah, yeah, two stories. And um, it, but the oh, the plane was like an old. It was like an older plane. Yeah. And so the 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 TVs were like square mm-hmm. and like quite bad quality and stuff. But one thing that really did make, interest me on the way back is that. Uh, me and my wife had like the exact same like seats as me and you had on the way back. We didn't fly with the same airline, but in the sense that we were sat that exact like same posi- bit, yeah. and we had three seats. At the back seats. of the wing, it's at the back, wasn't it? No, it was, it was like more towards the front on the right. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah I do. On the way back, yeah. Yeah, on the way back, yeah. and we had three seats um, to ourselves. That's like, right. Yeah, that's had, right. And that's exactly what me and my missus had, and so we could like really comfortably yeah. sleep and knock out. What about on the way out there. And oh, the way out there was really difficult flight, man. Was it? Yeah. So Josh travels all the time. How do you how do you deal with flying and traveling? Because it's quite a strenuous. It's it's well. You tell me how do you deal with yeah, flying yeah, and yeah. traveling? Um, to be honest with you, I'm usually asleep before the plane takes off. Is that something you plan? So do you make sure that you go to the airport a little bit tired, so you know you're going to sleep, or you just naturally you fall asleep on a flight? Uh, anyway? Naturally, I've just been able to sleep. Put your head back and yeah, just net back and. Gone. That's it, straight out. Yeah. And then the worst scenario is when you wake up and you haven't moved. Um, that's that's <laughs> that's the worst scenario that still can happen. The, still so the runway. I kind of I kind of wait until we're. <laughs> you've, had, you've had your snooze. Please. I kind of wait until we're on the runway and let that let that kind of elevation backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your time to drop off. Fall as, that's it. Yeah, so I know them ones. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That's nice, maybe, isn't it? When you maybe can... just before. But um, yeah, certainly if you don't move and you wake up and you, you feel refreshed and then you've got twelve hours to go, that. That is not a nice. Do you, are you are you intimidated by a long flight and a long bit nah, of travelling? Not anymore, man. Not after I've been to Australia, and more so, 
how far do you go for the time that you're there is more the kind of mental training that you do preparing for the flight. Do you know what I mean? So, for example, I went to Brazil, um, you know, two and a half weeks ago, and I went for a 12 hour flight for, and I was there for no longer than four days. And when, when you I, were there for the four days, weren't you f- traveling, I traveling inside I was, that? I was traveling in inland flights as well. So, um, typical scenario was that Friday night I left from Heathrow, got to Brazil Saturday morning, um, chilled out, ate, next day was working. Straight after work, took an inland flight, three hours to the next location, landed there Sunday morning, two in the morning, did the work during the day, eight in the evening, woke up next day, was Tuesday, um, no, no, wait, wait. So I left on, on Friday night and got there Saturday day, chilled out, Sunday worked, straight after work. Um, went to the next location, so that's Monday. Monday worked, eight next morning, swim upstairs on the way to the airport, inland flight, waited at the airport four hours, another 11 hour flight back to London. So it was like about 30 hours of flying and I don't even think I was on the ground for that long, to be honest with you. Did you feel it? I didn't, no, I felt it was all right. I was just constantly on the move. So whenever I could get rest, that's when I did, and it was fine, really. Because what you do, you travel really, really far on a long, long journey, and then you almost you're performing. You get off the plane, he's almost performing straight away, looking smart in front of people, like on his best. Because for, for me, after I've done a long flight, you get out the other side. I'm talking about a long flight, anything plus five hours or so. You get off the other side, you feel, you know, you've travelled, don't you? You feel kind of. For me, I feel a, a bit delicate and a bit rough. It's almost like Josh tries to travel, and then boom, straight away he's wearing a fresh white shirt and he's in front of. Hundreds of people I think with the, a microphone. The adrenaline, you know what I mean. Have you ever showered yeah. at the airport? Nah, but that would be nice. That would be nice. Showered? They yeah. do that. They don't the airports have showers and stuff. Yeah, I think you have to be maybe in a different lounge. Yeah. That, that would be really refreshing. I've not seen that as a as a as an obvious option to have yeah, a take a shower. Dubai. Mm-hmm. See that in the Dubai airport? Yeah. Mm. Not always. Don't see it. I think all airports do have it, but I think it's for I think it's in like those lounges where like those executive lounges. We can't. We can't afford that kind of level like you. Oh, I've never, I've never, I've never done it. I've never done that. So I've just seen it on video. It's like one of those things that you see and say, "Oh, one day." One day. Yeah. Not yet though. So it's, it's an interesting one. The lounges and the, the the ticket prices and stuff of of flights. Like we, I think I've probably had the conversation with you before. I've had it with many people about the actual the, the difference in the the costing of a a normal seat on a plane. You have to fly business class, don't you, Sam? Absolutely not. Then to business <laughs> class, the first class, the, start, the price what, is just insane. A, insane. A 12 bags extra, 20 yeah. bags extra. Just for it's like 10 a, times the price, at least. And crazy, I actually uh, treated myself to a massage just before the flight home in Brazil. I thought, you know, I deserved it yeah. after, you know, four days turnaround. Sports massage or normal massage? I got, I got, a, I got a sports massage <laughs> and he said, you know, do you want the, uh, the pressure soft, medium or strong? And I, I thought, my muscles are aching. You know, I'll go for strong, thinking that's going to be nice. I'll be relaxed on the plane, um, to the point where it was over the over the t-shirt and it was strong. Yeah, like it was. It was sore. I was sore on your back. On the is it yeah, on the back. I was sore. I Did he like uh, do the knots thing? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. All over the t-shirt though. So I wasn't really expecting that. So mm-hmm. every, every, it was really sore. So he did it over had, the t-shirt. Over the t-shirt. Yeah. So I had an eleven-hour journey. And I couldn't put my back on the seat. I had to kind of put my shoulder oh, on the seat. Oh, that's a yeah. I was thinking. Ideal, was it? I thought I was trying to be smart, thinking, "Oh, I'll get a massage. I've got yeah. plenty of time. I've been at the airport." Yeah, but you for didn't go hours. for like a nice relaxing massage. Nah, you went for I, like a sports. I went for the wrong option. What's the benefit of a massage that doesn't make you like relax and stuff? Is it long term? Well, yeah. If you have aches and pains in that, you you, you want to kind of get those knots out. And, okay. and we've spoken about massages before, haven't we? Do you remember we spoke about massages? No, I don't it was, remember. It's when we filmed in '59, and we were talking about. Because the only one time I had a massage <laughs> yeah, yeah, was in yeah, India, yeah. and I told you how. Because uh, do you know what? It was Josh who actually taught me to do it. Because he, he, I, I, I remember I also mentioned that Josh always gets massages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Goes, yeah, and, and, and you remember good... how me and you like said that we hate like being even being touched. Yeah. And then I said, "Oh, Josh gets massages." You said, "Yeah, but Josh is a good guy." Yeah, it's yeah, true. Said that but he 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 knows what's good for him. He gets like he obviously trains Such in that, so he gets Josh. a sports massage. But you don't get sports massage, do you? I hate being touched. I can't stand it. Like if I can see the hand come in. And I can like prepare for mentally. It's not so bad, and especially if it's like shoulder or finger or something yeah. like that. But like, yeah, like I'm comfortable now. I, yeah. I know you're like, do you know what I mean? Like, we 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 we're three guys very close together right now. Uh, I know that it's very possible that you could tap me on the shoulder and uh, an elbow. Yeah, but 
generally what about when you got your hijama though I, I, but, but, but that, I was prepared for it to an extent. And I've had hijama done numerous times before, so I know what it's like. And weirdly, with my back, it's not so bad. With my back, I don't mind. Like so maybe because I'm used to it. Maybe because like often you, you know you get tapped on the back, you get hugged, you get tapped. On the back. So maybe like my body. I'm where would to, you? Where would you not like to be massaged? Like, like anywhere else? Do you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know. I just not even massage. Like I'm not even like Touched. someone like touching me. Like you know, like heat, like the whole yeah, side. Yeah, I'm very sensitive as well. That, yeah. Like everywhere. But, yeah, <laughs> my missus hates that about me. I'm first time experience that he hates being touched. Yeah. Oh, Red does it all the time. Like, re- and like he sees my like like That's fiery true. side, yeah. and I like. What's your background then? Is it Pakistan? Pakistan. Hold hands. <laughs> they do, yeah. But I'm. I, 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 yeah, last time I went back down, I was six, man. Like in, in Bangladesh really? as well. Like, yeah, mm. is that not India as well. Remember in India, we saw a lot of man. Josh, yeah. one thing you need to know about me, Josh, is. Um, Here we go. I'm a bit of a lad. All right. Yeah, I'm a bit of a lad. So Self, uh, self-claimed lad. Uh, I'm a bit of a. They say in my language, they would call me a agora. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm just a British lad, you know. Apples and pears, Ruby Murray, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm a British lad. I had a, actually had a full English two days ago uh, in Liverpool. It was a halal full English. But, you know, I had the lot, you know, the turkey bacon, the sausages, uh, the, the two eggs. I was, I was in a builder's calf. <laughs> Typical. But you fit right in. Oh, like a, like a, I, I, I fit like a, a sock. Is that the right term? Um, glove. It's glove. Yeah, so holding hands with the man, damn Josh. No, nothing no. against it, but not for me. Okay. You, yeah. didn't, you didn't follow that? that not as lads. Like that. Nah, nah. I didn't, I didn't follow much, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm not against Pakistanis. I love Pakistan. Love my culture. Love my dad. <laughs> just thought I'd add that in. <laughs> just thought I'd add that in. Very good. And yeah. your mum? Bit of a lad. Yeah, love my mum. Of course I love my mum, man. Let's go back to Josh flying. And Josh, you touched on Brazil. Mm. Now, recently, your boy came across a video. Um, let me just set the setting for you. So, uh, massive stage sea of people and uh, the host says you know it gives a bit of an introduction and then says ladies and gentlemen josh lamonica and what you see josh um if you just allow me to kind of continue with this setting is in slow motion you see this sea of people waving their hands in the air screaming josh oh my gosh and out from the side of the stage <laughs> runs out what could only be described as a you know michael jacks michael jackson-esque uh celebrity uh for which you know the fans go crazy and uh it was none the, none other than our brother here josh lamonica himself uh you know and you were loving it and i saw a side of josh i saw a side of josh i was like this guy's sick. Like, you really yeah. seems in your element. And when I saw you doing that, I was like, this is what Josh does. Because yeah, you, yeah. when you see someone do something that, and, you, and they're naturally good at it, you're like, oh, that's what he loves. Because you can see it's just them. Like, it completely, you, you didn't, come you didn't out see with the water spray as yeah, well. Yeah. Well, what's that about? What? Y- 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 the Brazil love you. Yeah, man. Yeah, do you know what? That, that was a surreal experience, something that I have not experienced before. And I think the reaction was... The reaction was real. Like, I didn't know that that was going to happen. So, it certainly... I was certainly positively aroused, for sure. Um, I went to Brazil. I went on my own. And at the time... um, When I arrived to Brazil for the first time, this was back in July, um, it didn't look like what I thought Brazil should have looked like. You know, I was in a hotel on the motorway and it just wasn't the Brazil that I'd seen on TV or in the pictures, do you know what I mean? So I was there sort of thinking, you know, okay, so I'm I'm here now. I'm kind of, I'm kind of feel like I'm on the job now, which I've never kind of ever felt before. Um, So my mind started to tick. What do you mean by that? You you feel like you're working opposed to... Yeah, yeah. I thought I was, I, I definitely thought that this was, this was a job. You know yeah. what I mean? And you don't it's usually feel that. No, nah, it's definitely ne- it's never a job, you know, to to cut hair in front yeah, of people yeah, yeah. and and, and kind of help people, you know, learn. And um, certainly when I was there, I was thinking, right, I'm, I'm here on my own. You know, um, the organisers are busy, so I'm I'm kind of just here on my own at the moment. You know, I've got a couple of people <coughs> that I know coming from America the following day and whatnot. But um, it certainly was just like, right, I just got just got to kind of do this. You know what I mean? 
um, which is something I've never really felt before. So I was kind of just in a reflection period at that point. And then a couple of you know barbers started to arrive. They stayed in the same hotel and you know, a few pictures and that. I was thinking, okay, cool. Yeah, now I'm, f- I'm familiar with this now, you know. Mm. And um, so we got to check out the venue the uh, the night before. And by this time, I'd met a couple of guys um, that I've met before in America. And um, I started to you know get a little bit excited now. And I see the venue. It looked like uh, this big theatre. And I was just like, yeah, this is cool. This is cool. This is great. Um, it's not like what I've seen in Australia, though. So I was thinking, okay, I'm just I'm still on the job. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to have a good time here. I'm going to get to know my these guys from America mm-hmm. a little bit better. I'm going to have a good time. And so the day of the event came, and I moved my, hot- my hotel by this point because I wasn't, you know, wasn't best pleased about being in that particular hotel. Not being a diva, just I wanted to be know, where the I Americans exactly, were staying. Yeah. I, I was a bit lonely, to be honest. Of I'm course. not going to lie. and I, I, that's, that's not the way that I wanted to be feeling when I was about to deliver to suspectedly 1,600 people in which there was. Um, so the day of the exhibition came along, day one, and the day that I was presenting was day two. But however, we had to be there on day one to you know uh, judge a particular competition. And... They were calling us out one by one um, to be presented to the crowd, you know, and, and, and say hello and whatnot. So they presented Andy and then following, I came up and I'd already heard the sound of these people, of 1600 people um, before, you know, I was presented on that stage. And, and, and we was all just looking at each other like, this is just wild. Like this is, we're just cutting hair and the people well, it was like a football match. That sound, a football match, it was just absolutely intense and, and solid in your ear. That's the first time you've experienced that, yeah? Ever experienced that for, for cutting hair. Yeah. You, know, you expect that at a football game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 70 yeah, yeah. thousand people, whatever. Um, but yeah, then, then Andy went up and I was thinking, blimey, that was a fantastic reception. Like That was in- incredible. Um, and so it was my turn and the gentleman called me up and he, he put a spin on the name Josh LaMonica. Mm-hmm. And you should have heard the sound of the people. Up. Like, it was just... Like, usually, you know, when you present it on the stage, you just sort of, you know, how you doing? Yeah, good. Nice to see you. I had two hands up. <laughs> and by the time I was walking out, I just sort of went like that, say hello. And the sound <laughs> and the vibration was just yeah. making me go mental. And eventually I was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. okay. and, and, and it was their, it was their positive energy that was yeah, spinning on me. And it was just kind of repelling from me, bouncing back, but then coming back again. And I was just, wow. I was just all over the place. Such a natural thing. It was incredible. Like I can wow. still feel it now. It was just like intense, just shaking. Wow. Due to the fact that there was this screaming noise, just vibrating through my body. Like just incredible, incredible. Wow. Like there's just, a supreme feeling of gratefulness from appreciation of people. And it was just from that moment, I understood the reason why I was there, you know, and, and the purpose of me being there and what I have to offer and what, you know, Allah has granted me to give and to show these people, do you know what I mean? Not only just by cutting skills, but professionalism as well. And just the general heights that you can reach within your career. Do you know what I mean? It was, it was incredible. Amazing. Is that a highlight of your career? Oh, definitely, definitely. Really? I just, this is something I've never experienced before, and I think that, you know, I wish, I wish that my team were there to experience it and to see it and mm. to see, you know, what they can achieve. Do you know what I mean? And the impact of the brand that they themselves like contribute towards, oh, right? I had sixteen hundred people shouting out Menspire. It's mad. How yeah. does that make you feel, Sam? Yeah, incredible. Humbled, right? oh, yeah, absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. And do you know what that what that one particular show that Josh did really caused a lot of people to discuss it and talk about it because it was just incredible seeing people react to that over someone who, as Josh would say, just cuts hair. But that is just incredible. It's like like ultimate celebrity status. It's like a ultimate rock star, movie star. These people. It was just it was incredible to see and yeah, truly humbling and just incredible. What's the largest crowd you performed in front of now? Um, to be honest, I thought that was it, but I think when I went to Russia um, a couple of months later, <laughs> uh, there was actually about two thousand people. Oh, so did you see the ru- Did you see the Russia footage? Yeah, that was. I didn't see that. Uh, it was kind of like I, I mean that, that that was I mean I think they've got a lot of money over there, so they're kind of invested into this massive exhibition. 
But there's UFC and fights going off at the same time, people doing hair and mm. motorbikes. And this, yeah. this, this guy's obviously, you know, is a, is a dreamer. And um, the, the, the guy who organizes it um, of Top Gun Barbershop. And it was kind of like whatever he dreamt of, he wanted to become a reality. And I kid you not, there was motorbikes there, there was cars there, there was a UFC ring there, there was people cutting hair, there was, you know, people doing whatever they was doing on the on the on the stage and, and bands and whatever else it was. It was just it was mental. Like I'd never seen anything like it. And when I came in um the entrance, it was all just dark. So it was kind of like just this this festival of just things going on. Not necessarily like a exhibition hair show that I've ever been to. And it would have been about two thousand people. It was just like a you can imagine just like a concert stage type thing it was just it was mental so what would your advice be to people who are listening who are because i think that sam you'd agree with me that we find that a lot of our listeners are people who are they, they're not people who just um lounge about and uh are, are time waste i think we have a very productive audience who are set high goals and want to achieve high goals and uh, and you're one of those guys that perhaps they would look up to and be like you know this guy is a, a benchmark of where i would like to be perhaps how would you what advice would you give to a person who, you know, ha, my question basically is how, how do you stay humble and grounded at that level at which there's 1,600 people screaming your name? <laughs> w w what do you do to make sure you stay how, like, you know, that like just the Monica we're seeing now, uh, uh, a humbled, um, you know, person? Mm. Well, I think, I think humility is key to all of this, but um, what I'm going to suggest to the listeners is something that might shock you and something that you might resonate with as well. And I'm gonna to say to people that are listening that I have the best company in the world. That's what I believe. And I don't mean when I say I have the best company, I don't mean that Menspire is the best company. What I mean is the people that I am surrounded with in, Mes in, in Menspire are the best company for me and the best company for each other. Because the company that I keep are the company that support me and the company that I support back. And it's the people that I'm around are the people that are gonna allow me to grow and for me to allow the team to grow. And that's the sort of company that, you know, our listeners need in their life. You know, it's the company that you need to have people that affect you and not infect you to be, to be straight. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that's it in a nutshell is the company you keep yourself with is going to allow you to grow it's going to allow you to progress and ultimately ultimately become you know as, as successful as you want to be or those around you so what, what's what, what is there, what's left for Josh Monaco in terms of do you want to continue doing what you're doing because that's what you love or is there you know some goals that you're willing to share with us that are not, uh, that, you know, it's, it's short term goals or long term goals or where's your head at? Where's the head yeah, space? So for me, um, you know, I know my, I know my boundaries and I'm my limits. I know that, you know, I can't continue traveling forever. I know that, um, you know, the human body is only capable of so much. And of course, at the same time, I want to be able to give, you know, my people, these opportunities as well. So, and it's not something I want to take them away from. It's something that I want to give them to. So, um, ideally for me, my next goal is to be able to provide online education. Therefore, I can hit the masses from afar, but at the same time, give the opportunities of my, my team, that of which I've had in the previous year. Um, and, and that's my goal at the moment. You know, so I'm going to set out to do that over the next year. I want to learn Spanish, to be honest. Um, I want to learn Spanish so I can communicate with, you know, a whole different type of audience as well. Um, oh. so I've do got a couple you know any of Italian? Here. Yeah, I know Italian, yeah. I know Italian, but I want to, I want to learn Spanish because nice. I've been, been doing a lot of work over in Spain and hopefully South America as well next year. So that's another goal. That's a good goal. Learn another language. Mm. Spain is a good, um, Spanish is a very good language to learn. I was told that at a very young age. Mm. If you're going to learn a language, learn Spanish. Queen's I here. I see, yeah. Yeah, Spanish. He speaks speak Spanish. Yeah. yeah. 
We, we have a we have a guy who's who's vi- visiting from Spain. He used to work. He came from Spain to work here. And now he's gone to kind of build his own thing back in Spain, nice. and he's come to visit. Well, we've just taken me. on a guy over in Dublin, um, a mm. Spanish boy from Barcelona, um, who's come and studied with us at the Men's Spire Academy. Um, Gustavo, big up lovely, Gustavo. Yeah, big up Gustavo and Tanucci. He's a lovely boy. I mean, I I don't, I can't understand him, but he's a lovely boy. <laughs> um, so that's why I want to learn Spanish as well, so I can get to talk to him <laughs> and. and, and Rather than sort of typing in on translator and going, there you go. Is Read he that. there now at uh, Dublin? He's there, he's there yeah, he's oh, landed. He's yeah, 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 he's there cutting hair. Oh, yeah. sick. So How many chairs have you got in Dublin store? Six. Six. Is it, oh, so, so the, is this store bigger, the, the, the no, it's not. flagship? Uh, oh, it's an open shop. This store is bigger, eight, eight chairs. Oh, and you got your new um, things recently. Because I came, so I went into the barber shop the other day. New as things? I did to get, yeah, yeah, new things. Hold on a second. Oh. Hold on a second there, mate. Um, I went to, the old men's buyer, St. Albans, the other day, sat down um, on Midge's chair and something felt a bit different as I was getting my hair cut. And when I say different, it actually felt quite a bit better. Not that I thought it could get better, but I felt slightly more comfortable, especially around my neck region. New, ga- new capes. And I realised there's some new men's buyer capes in the building. I said, yo, Midge, are these some new capes? He said, they, indeed they are, son. Indeed they <coughs> are. He didn't say son and he did, probably didn't say indeed either. He just... Yeah, he would have said that. He replied in the affirmative. He said, yeah, didn't he really? Yeah, he probably said, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, 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 he would have said, G. And then he just, up, yeah. 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 He, he just moved on with the conversation then. But yeah, it, it was, so We've it was got a few thing. bits of new equipment. Um, the reason being is because in a salon full of men, mm. things go missing, you know, and people get blamed for things that maybe it's not their fault and whatnot. So we decided to actually label our names on our neck brushes, our water sprays and our gowns. And it's actually been fantastic because... Really? The reality is, if someone has your neck brush, you are going to find out. Your True. name's on and it. And that's, that's, you know, that's going to be... How is the name on there? Like engraved? Properly, yeah. It's, oh, it's, really? It's, oh, it's sick. labelled up and it's, uh, it's the last name of everyone. Um, it's really sick. interesting because when I was in Brazil... So yours says Paya? No, it doesn't. Oh. It says Palma because it's my surname. Oh, okay. Oh, I was just thinking S Empire. That's obviously just an Instagram name. Oh, okay. Sempire. Don't start with him because he doesn't like it. No problem. Sempire. It's Empire. So it's my initials SMP. Have you ever got someone come up to you and say, yo, what's happening? Spire. Spire. You know they Spire. have many times, yeah. It's Empire. Yeah. It's Empire. Aspire. It's Empire. It's just Sam. Really? Sam Abdul Samad. <laughs> it's it's a to do it. Yeah, anyway, so I was in, I was in, <laughs> when I was in Brazil, um, I'd said to the guys, there's about 150 there in Sao Paulo, and I, I'd said to him, you know, I really wanted to be a footballer when I'd grown up, you know, because I wanted to have my name on the back of my shirt. You know, and, and, and that was a, you know, a goal for me, you know, but as as got older and, and whatnot, my passion started to slowly lead into to cutting hair. And uh, eventually, you know, the, the best thing about cutting hair is that, you you know, you get to have your name on the back of your neck brush and your water spray and, you know, they were loving it you know, <laughs> because now that's it. You're probably going to find in Brazil, Same everyone's trends. got their name, you know, on their oh, water spray. Oh, <laughs> wow. So it's, it's incredible. Did you guys recently get your? Um, did you guys get some new clippers engraved at Barbacon? That's correct. Yeah, it wasn't Barbacon. It was, was that? Nice that you're bringing up these uh, names. You've been listening over the years. <laughs> I'm just a bit of a lad. I'm just a bit of a barber. I mean, I'm, I'm involved. Barbacon is in NYC. Listen, I'm just involved in the barber scene somewhat. Yeah, yeah. far from. And uh, no, no, don't, wait. Don't tell me. I'll tell you what. What, what, what expert it was? Don't think about it. It Calm was. Down. It had the word barber in it. No. Oh, okay. It was. Um, Should I help you? Bit, Sa- t- tell me the name. Of the Salon. Beginning. Salon Express. In- <laughs> Salon International. Salon International. Yes. Oh, I thought it was Barbacon. Anyway. Barbacon was New York. So that was just did you go to Barbacon ago. there? Yes, we did, yeah. Yes, so okay. That's where Josh was awarded Educator of the Year. 2017. Good knowledge. Which is the year now, which means that as of now, literally the educator of the world. Yeah. You're, yeah. Best. Yeah. you're the best up to date. As far as statistics show, up to date, Josh Munkar, best educator. Anyway, did you guys get your? So did you get one as well? Yeah, uh, did you? Yeah. Um, yeah, did you? Yeah, yeah. Salon International. Yeah, looked nice, and Glenn got one. I was, I've been watching yeah. you guys' stories, don't worry. They all sold out those clippers, actually. Oh really? It was a big, big weekend for those clippers. They they sold out all the units. Were they were they your clippers that you took and got? Um, no, no, no. Oh, so they were they were released that weekend. Uh, they were a brand new cordless clipper, um, and the first thirty people to buy them got your name engraved. Oh, see. Well, I'm, I imagine barber equipment must be expensive. I have no idea, but it must be expensive, isn't it? There's so many different. Then tools those stuff. particular clippers are now being retailed about 175 quid. Yeah, really. Yeah. For the senior, yeah. For the senior cordless, yeah, because okay, so you're not a fan, took, are you? Should have took my magic and got that in black. Yeah, great. yeah, yeah. It's good. You like you like a. Each warrior desires a different weapon. Yep. 
Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm going to say no. He's worried as other different. Uh, he prefers another set of clippers. Okay. Oh, so it's not like. Oh, sorry, Mike. 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 Screw that up a bit. You can tighten this. Just how you will. Essentially, it's picking up like only like what's in front of me. So just ensure. So there's not like a like w like one thing that's known as like the best clipper. Like every or everyone has that like, different preferences. It's a preference, isn't oh, it? Oh, really? Yeah. It's definitely the most that's popular ones that generally people hover around. But um, it's a preference thing, yeah. A bit like um. Well, there's nothing like it, but my, my uncle is an optometrist, optician, and he carries his tools with him in his car. Does he? Why? Uh, I don't know. He likes his tools, and I think he's I spent a lot of money, invested a lot of money into his tools. Oh, for like, because they're expensive, so he holds on to them. Yeah. Like he's a, he locums as well, so he like he's like a freelance optician mm. kind of thing, so he goes to different things. It's good. Yeah, so he carries his things I think in his with boot. barbering, there are, there are so many tools out there. I think that, you know, it really does target consumerism. Um, and something that I commonly say in the academy is that it's not the content in which we use, but it's the context and how we use them. Meaning that, you know, you could go and get me a, a clipper from Argos and I will still give you a fantastic haircut due to the fact that it's my technique that overrides the tool. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's sometimes where we kind of get blindsided from all these fabulous new products and, and tools and equipment that, you know, just become available on the market. But... You know, I bet you that there are so many people out there who are doing fantastic haircuts with probably the oldest tools, you know. And, and Agreed. Comes down to but would you would you say that, you know, when you do get that fresh clipper or the fr fresh tool that does almost enhance your day, make it slightly easier sometimes? I think, I think you're naturally um, excited about using it because it's new. Unless it's obviously the power that is generated more so from the new products in comparison to your old product. Um, but the purpose of the tool is that it does the same thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you definitely, you are excited when you get a new tool. You, you naturally are excited to use it and want to use it and become inspired to do something with it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, technique. So, you know, um, when, uh, is there like a, uh, with in, in your guys' industry, is there, do you have to like constantly stay on top of things or is it like once you have the skill that you have, like for example, you guys, uh, and I've mentioned it so many times before, but with men, the way men spy art cut hair, so I've never seen it anywhere else because it's like, as you said, Sam, it's almost like a barber mixed with a um, hairstylist in the sense that you guys, I mean, you're all great barbers, but you also use like such a technique and like um, almost like maths to how you cut hair. And even every time, um, a lot of times when I'm with Sam, he will look at someone random and like he'll just be looking at him and i'll be like and he'll say oh, i'd love to, i'd love to cut his hair because like mm -hmm. he can see like the shape that he'd like to do and that kind of stuff and i think that's a really um interesting a trait because i've not heard that in people just like general barbers or anything like that but is it something that you have to keep updating your skill set because you do see sometimes like different like i don't know like crazies and stuff on like, instagram and stuff that like, barbers and because it's clearly a massive um uh, what's the word a massive community like the barber community the hair uh, style in the salon like uh, the, the industry itself there's a massive community involved there and it's like always different stuff I, mem I remember recently not recently but maybe like a year ago there was this big craze about those black mask things and but even though it, I don't know if it has anything to do with hair but it, all of the barber shops started doing it and stuff like that mm. so generally do you keep on top of all of that kind of stuff and try and update yeah, gen it yeah generally because you know, the, the industry has evolved so much. Male grooming has increased so much over the last five to 10 years. You know, if you're, if you haven't evolved, you'll still be charging what you were charging 10 years ago. And again, that's not progression. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Especially with everything fluctuating, you know, how can you expect to keep up with, you know, personal bills and stuff like that in, in, in the respect of your earnings and in the respect of your skills, then yeah, of course, as things evolve, fashion becomes abundant and you know you need to be updated with it so it's definitely something that you need to keep on top of and it's and i think the same goes with any any industry you know if you're not evolving with the industry then there's no progression there's no growth so you will fall behind or you will stay stagnant evolve or become extinct isn't it mm. it's the, yeah nice yeah should we enter into some current events to switch it up a bit. Mm -hmm. How do you think about how do you feel about current events, Josh? Did we do current events with you last time? I don't think we didn't, sure. did we? No, we didn't because it was Josh, our last episode I'm I'm actually really happy that you're here right now and you're getting to experience freshly grounded at like a good point because we have producer Red with us and you know, we've got everything set up properly in the studio because last time we were in the old office 
I had to produce and film the podcast as well as be on it. That's right. Yeah, I do. We yeah. didn't have um, we didn't have current events, and now I think this is like you know well. We're getting there, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, re- uh, producer Red, are we ready for current events? We are ready. Yeah. Let's get into some current events. <laughs> current events. Red one. Yeah, they just they just make noises, Josh. Don't be surprised. He's it's not surprised. He's used to it. Yeah, he's yeah. very much used to it. I, know, I mean, I assume that's Josh's surprise. Oh, feel me to make a noise. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Joshy, mate. Are we still live? <laughs> yeah, still live. How are we doing, guys? Good man, how are you, Red One? I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm doing how great. bizarre is this to be doing like freshly grounded in the dark on a Thursday? It is, it is, it is it's ridiculous. never been done. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's never been done. It's never it feels done. nice. It does. I feel a lot more relaxed about yeah, making difference. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, but it's I, weird, bizarre, even having dark. I'm not. I've never really seen. The, I've never seen the office dark. Well, it was here weird he walking through the cafe and it was dark. When I first met Fassel, the, the office was like this. It was like dark. Got Fassel? dark really early. Face, face, face. Oh, big daddy face. Some people call me big daddy face. They don't. No, I no, no. Oh, just Sam called me once. Fossil, fossil, fossil. People. Oh, that's that's yeah, fossil. Yeah. Ways, yeah. yeah, you remember the um, a fa- you remember Fassel's was wedding? Faisal. No, Fassel. All oh, right. That's why I, I I I used to call him Faisal, and then, and then I heard everyone else called him well, Fassel. 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 It's confusing, isn't it? I was about yeah. to correct him, but then. He what I've learned is best just to go. I didn't say back multiple names. Just go along with it. I confused myself. I had a school friend called. Faisal, so Faisal, I just you did. thought that Faisal was the name, That's not Faisal. Faisal, Faisal, Faisal. Faisal, 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 Faisal is like, the, the, I think it's the Pakistani way of saying it. Yeah. Faisal is, yeah. So, yeah. What does Faisal mean? Yeah. yeah, Faisal means indecisive. means decisive. Faisal means decisive. Faisal yeah. means decisive. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. because your decisions will determine your destination. True. Sah. Sah. Yes. No, I said, I said. Do that, so all, uh, Go on, current very, events. What very, you got? Um, decisive person. So, what's current events? Is that like live current questions? events? Is currently what's going on? The events right. that are currently going on around the world. Red one pulls out a um, couple of different ones when he researches it, and then we generally have a small discussion on each event, depending on how interesting they are. Sometimes they're interesting. Sometimes we keep not. it moving. We don't go into it too much. Yeah. So sometimes we just skim over it. Mm-hmm. Just so chat about the current events. What have you got there, Ready? Like, like a couple of lads on a podcast. We've got. <coughs> all right. So, well, this is a this is a big one. Well, not that. I mean, depends. Please. So, uh, well, Da Vinci paintings. There's only about twenty in existence. Yep. Um, and one just went for four hundred fifty million on on an auction, which broke all records for paintings um, like and what? art, really. So, mm-hmm. what's your like stance on that? Four hundred and fifty million dollars. That is ridiculous for painting. Painting. Shall I tell you what I read it's about? It's not the this? Mona Lisa as well. It's called the. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Salvatore Mundi. It's the same guy who did the Mona Lisa, right? Yeah. So yeah. basically, yeah, this painting is like less clear than the Mona Lisa in the sense that like it's a bit blurry and stuff, and it's still got sold for 450 million. Okay, why? Oh, why? That's I a guess good question. The legacy that comes with it, maybe. Because that that is exactly it, isn't it? Like, deservedly, someone has created that image to be sold at that price. Why? That's the fundamental question that we want to get down to, to kind of align yourself with the successes of that man. Wait. And for me, that tells me that you don't get rich by doing things, you get rich by doing things in a certain way, and that's exactly what this man has done. Do you think Would when you he did it, he thought he was going to get 450 mil? No, I don't think, uh, because- Well, he's dead, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He was an inventor as well as, well as a, an artist. So he was well known in the Italian community as like as a scientist, as an inventor. So <clears throat> I don't know whether he actually intended for for it to be sold at the <coughs> price, or I don't know what, what we. Well, none but of how insane! Know. How you know, four hundred and fifty million yeah. for a painting from someone who's not currently around. It's, it's crazy how our, our world works. Isn't it, it is insane. If you actually think about the va- the value of a pa- of just a painting. What can you do with that painting other than look at it and admire it? Which is obviously something. But I mean, he's a part of their history, I guess. Yeah, of course, That's yeah. Much as it's just that guess, lot. Just yeah, actually just that swallow those lot, figures. It is a lot, it is a lot, 100%. It's, it's, it's a Same. great deal yeah. of money. Yeah. And he will never even see it. Which really sucks for him. Yeah, he will never see it. No. Man's making belly off his... People are making good money from his... His work. His work. It's crazy. So who brought it? And where's it going? Uh, it is going... And what does that man... What does oh, the man... Wait, was it, wait, the guy who bought it was a bid between two guys or was it a telephone bid? A telephone bid. Okay, and what do they do? Have you ever spent 450 million on, a t- on the phone, Sam? No, what do they do? What's their job? I have zero idea. I think... Is it, was he French? Yeah, he is. He's a French dude. 
Oh, what is it? Euh, I don't know. Uh, Bolivie de France, oui. Sorry? Bolivie de France. Non? Oui. Il dit qu'il était le premier commissaire par Louis. Je ne sais pas ce que XII est dans les Roman numérales. XII? Vous regardez la figure de 7? 7? Donc Louis VII de France. Je n'ai pas l'idée de ça. Ça ne va pas vous aider dans le but. Non, il est bien. Qu'est-ce qu'il est prochain? C'est un skin pasta. C'est bon. Next one. Speak more freely. So a mother who lost twins uh, days after they were born, uh, within three months, were born mm. again, uh, sorry, not born again, was pregnant again with a set of twins, boy and girl. So the first boy and girl passed away within, within days of, Spahan. you know, having been born, and then three months later, they, um, she was born again, with, uh, pregnant again. With, uh, Subhanallah. And, and this, the current situation? Is uh, and pregnant. now it's been almost a year that the new twins have been born. And they're oh, fine? They're healthy. Born, yeah. Alhamdulillah. 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 Are, they, are, they, are they a boy and a girl as well, the new yeah. one? Oh, wow. Crazy. That's, what, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that's like a blessing. You can be blessed yeah. with that so quickly. Yeah. So it's, um, and being, having twins is so rare, right? Yeah, it's still quite rare. Definitely. It's definitely rare. You don't really... Um, I don't think twins happen as often unless you actually have it within your genome. In your so genes, if, yeah. if it's like a... If it's possible, so if you're... If you're Predecessors have had, have had twins, and you're more, more likely to get twins. Otherwise, it's got it's got to be come from it's got to come from mutation. What a blessing! It's which fun. is nuts, right? It's crazy. Within three months, so within the year. That is crazy. It's Look a crazy kind of the rahmat of Allah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what else have we got? So, uh, WhatsApp released recently a feature to be able to delete <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing messages from. You know, a conversation. So if you were to d if you were to send something, would you within kind of seven minutes? I think within, it is within seven minutes. But I heard if you delete about this it, yesterday. Um, it deletes from your chat as well as your, you know, um, whoever's on the other side. Um, as long as they haven't read it within seven minutes, right? I think so. Yeah. But so I could technically text or Satyam Hamul saying "I love you" and then yeah, screenshot it. You should do that anyway, sooner to know. actually tell your Muslim brothers that you love them for the sake of honor. So That's what you think. I, 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 I advise you do that anyway, inshallah. But it, tell him I love him as well, inshallah. Oh, okay. Can That's you do that? But if he's a, if he's I do. I don't. I, I, are you in that position? I'm probably not in that position. I'm sure he would appreciate it. Someone takes me saying, "I love you" for the sake of what I was saying. Do you know whoever it is? Of gratefulness. Yeah. That is. That is really yeah. like if that comes to him, that is going to send so much positive wave through his heart. I mean, it's true. That hopefully it's true. There's no, no lie here. He'll probably no respond the same thing. So it's. He'll probably return what do you think it as his initial reaction for the sake of Allah. Be? So he, that's probably how he would return it. What do you think his initial reaction would be? Uh, I, I don't. I don't want to fall into. Uh, what will his reaction be I when he sees big face? Okay, what if I was? Okay, so what if I was to just message you like? I would love brand, that. Like, oh yeah, no, that's different. I I take Sam saying I love him for the sake of Allah. Don't okay, Sam. I don't know. You don't usually open those ones. Oh okay. I'm joking, of course. <laughs> But no, Tim Humble, you don't, you don't, you have, it's a yeah, different relationship. He says, yeah, yeah right, like, it's strong, but it's, 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 we shouldn't, it's not so. I've, I've said this before. When you, when I first became Muslim, and I suddenly started having like men tell me that they love me and they're hugging me and stuff, I was almost like, oh, this is a lot. But it's actually very beautiful. Yeah, so I think yeah. loving someone, mm. we're, we're bro we are brothers. Do you know what I mean? We're, we're normal. Do you know what I mean? So when someone loves you for the sake of honor, it's, it's what we should be saying to each other. So do it, do it right now. Pull your phone out. Hmm? Oh. Pull we'll, your phone we'll out and we'll send the message. Mm. I look, we peer pressure. Uh, maybe you came up with the idea. You interrupted mm. current events and said, "What do you think if I text Tim Humble saying I love you?" And now we're talking about it. It's not too much. Oh uh, yeah, now yeah, is yeah. Follow through with I'm that. You follow through. I, know, I said, "What if?" I didn't say I'm gonna follow I said, through. I, I, oh, I'll show you our last text conversation, and uh, we had a nice, we had a nice bit of a conversation, and we it was it. You know, Did you see he told me he's a busy man as well. Not, not, on the, not in the conversation, but he doesn't get to all of his messages, so he he kind of appreciates being messaged. For when things need to, when it's like things need to be done, and so I'm going to respect that of him. So you're not going to tell him you love him? Uh, maybe later in the future. Maybe when we, get, we look, he he says up to do a podcast with me and you. So maybe inshallah we can tell him together. Inshallah, inshallah. Because I do actually love Tim Humble. Same here. And, the, effect, so. and the effects that his um, of his work is good, excellent. Really, I really highly advise people to search Tim Humble into YouTube and enjoy. What do you think of Tim Humble, um, Josh? Yeah, yeah, he's had a great effect on, on you know, my dean and my studies. So, mm -hmm. yeah, brilliant. Tune in. I can't wait to hear it. So, no. so this, man, it was, it was, uh, it was it's the episode that was up before this. So, whenever. Wicked. Yeah, going carry on, man. Yeah, carry on this yeah, way. So yeah. Going back to the point of, you know, having the feature. Oh, yeah, out, sorry. Yeah, people, yeah. That, people that have Android <laughs> can actually see it even if you've deleted it. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah, so if Tim Humble has an Android Spanner. and you send him the message, then he'll still be able to see it. Because, um, 
there's a setting on the Android phones that you can um, see messages from notification rather than actually in app. So. So the lesson from this is let's just be really careful like, of what you send and just exactly. don't send anything that you want to yeah. and, and yeah. go with it if that's yeah. what you've done. Even it, yeah. Talk You're going to make a decision to stick to it. Right. Yeah. And if you're angry, take 10 minutes out before you send that message. Definitely, yeah. Um, do that. Do that. I'm going to do that, inshallah. Cool. I'll do that. Trust. What else we got? <laughs> What's next? <laughs> so there's an Instagram account that was made by a Canadian lady, which is on 100,000 followers now, yeah? And what it's called is um, You Did Not Sleep Here. So if you go on Instagram, a lot of people take Instagram quite seriously nowadays and they'll Photoshop it, you know, Photoshop images for Instagram. And mm -hmm. most travellers, what they'll do is they'll Photoshop, like, tents in ridiculous places on Earth and, you know, kind of insinuate that they stayed there or camped there. And the account literally, you know, when at first glance, it seems like, it seems like you know, kind of like a wanderlust kind of account just to kind of portray the beauties of Earth. But it's just her taking a dig at each one of them uh you know just kind of not exposing them but like just like in a jokey way that oh did she oh, like screenshot actually, yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah, we put okay repost. and it's, it's the, the hashtag is like you did not sleep here there's another account like that called um like exposing fake watches or something and yeah. it will like take screenshots of celebrities who are wearing watches that on interviews and I've stuff and like that, yeah. show that it's fake or like show if it's real and stuff like that and um and when celebrity and this account is like followed by a lot of big celebrities as well and when someone is on there, like, like you'll be like reposted so many mm. times, and it's like the other. But it's like 100,000 100, like following from just doing that. It's crazy. Interesting, isn't it? It's nuts. Like, what can trend and what can attract attention? There's a, there was a similar Twitter account, but I can't remember what it was. It was a really funny Twitter account where, like, all they do is, like, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. If I, if I remember it during the podcast, I don't know. But. Anyway, last. Uh, wow, we 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 that. we've literally just shot through all of these kind of events so quickly, haven't we? Yeah, last one might be. Yeah, let's try to split down. Why is that? Uh, well, nah. the last one is just yeah. the Evening Standard, that was, and they released thirteen tips to help save money if you live in London. From thirteen finance, tips to help save money if you live in London. That's yeah, interesting. Let's let's, let's analyze each one. We've got the time. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So the first tip is loose change adds up. So. so I don't know what that means. By the That's end of the true. week, many of us have a few coins left over in our pockets and pur purses. And even down the back of the sofa, gather up these odd coins each week and put them in a jar. Let me tell you what me and my missus did when we went to buy this um, a week with regards to food. Right? We went out to restaurants and um, we did this thing where, mainly because like uh, we're both trying to be conscious and stuff like that. We just, you know like when you go to Cheesecake Factory or you go to like all these, all these restaurants and you like get a dessert and, and this and the other. Normally, we'd probably just get a dessert each. And what we decided, what we decided to do is get is share a dessert after our meal. And um, we both found that after when we shared a dessert, we were still we were like so full of it that like we couldn't even imagine the thought of having more. But if that if you have one dessert each, when it's in front of you, you do finish it, don't you? So it made made us realize that we actually eating for the sake of it because we literally feel so full of sharing this dessert. And it's a dessert, isn't it? It's an indulgence. It's something that you shouldn't really have too much of anyway. And so by sharing that dessert, we were we were so full of it, and it made me realize that you spend that extra, you know. A seven eight pound on a on a whole on a dish eating that eating out of desire eating out of desire you don't need you don't require it there's something beautiful about sharing a dish with your wife anyway and you saved yourself a good couple of uh pounds squids, mate yeah squid good couple of squid so big face says share your puddings share your puddings mm -hmm. it's good i'm not gonna say the obvious ones because I, I i feel like oh, i'll go on just list them all man let's hear so them just do them all. okay cool well, we'll just we'll just select what we're gonna okay yeah. keep track of what you spend yeah. yeah. Okay. Good, good shout. Which is a um, and uh, a given. Recon reconsider your smoking habit if you smoke. Yeah. Definitely agree. Um, don't, smoke. don't do it. Don't do um, it. Uh, make sure you're getting the best deal on your bills. So look like, look for the best providers. I guess. I agree. Ask, mahi. Ask mahi. Yeah. Ask mahi. 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 Yeah. Ask mahi. Mahi. mahi can sort that out for you. Network you marketing. Mahi. Yeah. They can do Contact that. Contact Mahi. Contact Chowdhury. Mahi. Mahi Chowdhury is on mahi Instagram. Chowdhury, he will be able to give you Marbles, the cheapest gas and electric. Marmite. Chowdhury Martin <laughs> Tanvir well his real name is Tanvir, Tanvir Chowdhury okay cool T underscore Chowdhury on Instagram if yeah. you want your bills <clears throat> reduced reduced gas and electric he can guarantee savings if you want hair shampoo whatever it is well, hair shampoo go on men's bar yeah and that 
But contact Mahi back. Contact Mahi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just contact Mahi anyway. If you've got time, just contact him. <laughs> yeah. DM him. Why not? Why not? Yeah. I'm sure he can sort you out somehow problems, with something. Yeah. yeah, wherever you need, just because he's, DM he's very he's, he's, useful like that. Yeah. He's quiet. He's not doing anything. He's sitting there doing nothing. DM him. Get him active. Wow. Yeah. Cool. yeah. What's the next one? Ready? Nice. Um, yeah. It's all about the side hustle. Yes. The side, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, I don't know. Multiple, you're an entrepreneur and it's a yeah, multiple yeah. income I mean, yeah, yeah. multiple yeah. income I, mean, I, yeah, used to, I used to sell skateboard decks oh no way you yeah. little mini finger decks oh, at oh, school yeah. I know I people I had clients that used to sell sweets at school yeah, yeah. Side, hustle side hustle cool. do the side hustle get yourself aligned with working hard and you know and, and mu- capitalising on your you know whatever you got multiple sources of income is a no brainer it's, it's a must isn't it yeah yeah MSI survival um, technique uh, you okay. should Evans was speaking about, wasn't he? He, he is mashallah he has uh, along with he has very successful martial arts academies but he still uh, has a side hustle in that he collects and sells trainers and he makes a good a, a good buck off them mm. uh, Yusha Evans oh okay. mm, yeah. a so good it's buck it's the story of human ambition isn't it mm. start mm. young I like that I like that I remember Josh yeah, yeah right. nine like not even that I remember that but I was going to say Josh walking around School, a brand new pair of trainers, which were not the most expensive trainers. I think they were from TK Maxx or something at the time. Pepe, Pepe, Pepe jeans. Pepe jeans. Sports Direct. Yeah. Sports Direct. Yeah, he had them. Yeah, but his brother was graffitiing them, so mm. hand oh, graffiti. I think might have yeah. mentioned this before, but yeah. I remember. I remember just walking around and he was taking orders for people getting these custom Sick. shoes. For Good real. hustle, man. Yeah, I rate that. I rate that highly. Mm. What's the next one? Red one. Uh, I want to do like, so a couple of them. Kind of go hand in hand. So, um, create a budget. Do up a mm. budget and use a spreadsheet or an app to basically keep a track um, and um, manage your money as if you know put aside put time put aside time to manage your money just as if you were to put aside time to you know have time with your family. You need to go on so to on. an accountant's course for that. That's quite that's quite intense. That one. It's, it's good. A lot of do you know what the, a lot of people do do that. I don't personally do that. And like I budget. Uh, just I was talking about the second one, which was oh, about the a sp- spread, down, spreadsheet, yeah. everything. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. And you know what? There's actually some really good apps that people have shown me that you can, you almost do it. Um, Sheets. You add basically what you've spent, and it all does. I, it I've all tried works using out. them before. Yeah, for me it wouldn't work. It's still, mm. it's difficult, man. You got to take each day as it comes, man. Just yeah. don't overspend. I think it depends on. I, I rely percent. on uh, good old pen and paper. Do you? Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. In my pocket, that's there. No way. Yeah. Wow, read that. I read that highly. Yeah, that's just like whatever's on your mind, the bang, point. done. Wherever I read that. Tool, technique, haircut, hairstyle, advice, anything. Just <laughs> that's it. Great. I like that a lot. Yeah, no. Um, no. Also, really nice pocket, pocket size as well, isn't it? Perfect. Yeah. Any pocket. Back yeah. pocket, front pocket, side pocket. You've got to pick a pocket or You've got to pick a pocket or two. Yeah. You know? What's next one, Rich? Uh, next one is um, set up a savings account and have a goal for how much you actually want to save. That is good. Um, and reevaluate mm. every uh, mm. couple of months. Yeah. That so is good. That standing is good, order. Depending on your... Stand, yeah, set up a standing order. For your tax. For your tax, your VAT. Mm-hmm. Your I rent, don't know. I, so I, okay, Everything so. they take you for. <laughs> <laughs> set up a standing one order. Active Make sure it happens each week. Yeah. You know? So yeah. if your bank gives you bonus rates, meaning that, you know, if you save... A certain amount, and then they increase that by like a certain Ooh. amount every year. Is that is that like is Ooh. that is that, is that interest? Ooh. That's, like, that's like a bit of a deep one. Isn't it? Oh, yeah, like, I'd have don't, to. I'd, don't uh, do that. Yeah, we're, oh, we're, we're not. We're not so, we're I, for instance, if you were talking about interest, I had a, I have a savings account and a tiny bit of interest went on it. You have to take that money as a separate. You give it away to charity yes. with an intention of just cl- cleansing yeah. your wealth. There's yeah. no reward there, but that's how you that's how you that's handle how you interest. I too, uh, I too have a savings account and I came across the exact same issue and I discussed it with my, uh, with well, he's not, he's not my personal banker, uh, but I just discussed it with the guy who set up the account who was a personal banker. And he said, and I said to him, is there any way I can like give it this I was, I was like, like, I literally don't want interest. I, and he was like confused. Yeah, no, they all are. Yeah, they? and I was like, I was trying to explain it to him. He's like, all right, fine, I, I get it now. But he said, there's, there's, there's literally nothing you can do apart from the, the charity thing. So, yeah, you're right. And I, I tend to give a tiny bit extra, extra, just in case, just so I know my cover my bases, just in case. Do you know what I mean? Because if I've even taken a penny of that, I would regret could that. Cleanse your wealth. Josh, could you pass me a tissue, please, next to you? Just as a pile of boxes, just the top one. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I, I say um, just leave it to the account and let him add it up and then just. Once, mm. once he's added it up, 
it's done. Otherwise, it's for you to try and just keep going over every month and just picking that little bit out. Yeah, but you shouldn't. Uh, you, your general account shouldn't pick up interest. It's yeah. just a savings account. Savings, right? Yeah. And you know, and if you online, you can view exactly like the nonsense interest. Which people who don't care about interest money be like, why? Why? Are you, that's crazy. Why are you talking about extra money being a bad thing? But obviously, as we know, it's, yeah. it's not a good thing to have in, in our in our currency. That's everything, though. No? Yeah. Is that well, well, yeah. that's actually. Uh, uh, perfectly fine because it's actually I didn't even realise you were going to do that current event um, and especially at the end of it because it relates perfectly to something that I just remember Josh mentioning right at the beginning of this podcast which was you were saying you're talking about dunya and how you you did I, I don't know what you said you, I didn't think you said the word dislike but you did definitely uh, uh, make the kind of insinuation that you have a I don't want to say you don't like dun- what, what were you saying you said, said something about dunya he said it's, no, it's not it's not his pl- it's not his ultimate plate like it's not his place like it's not in his heart I think no you said so, no, uh, no it was something else yeah something about not being in dunya, his heart dunya he goes in the day it's dunya and, and well and truly it's not in his heart oh, yeah. you were, you were talk- sorry sorry you were talking about you being risk like you do like taking mm-hmm. risks Risk, you yeah. the That's reason right. because you were taking risks was because you don't necessarily have that love for dunya like that yeah, mm-hmm. am I right in that saying mm-hmm. that yeah and I would love to hear more about that. What's your what's your take on this? Like when we say dunya, you know, worldly things, money, objects, um, you know, cars, that kind of stuff. What is? I would love for you to go more into that because you you because of what you mentioned. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think um, such a vast subject. You know, when we talk about worldly life and materialism, um, and for me, I think what it comes down to is how much do you worry about this worldly life, this material life that we we live in. You know, ultimately, I, I was having a conversation with um, my landlord of the academy there the other day, and I just put it down to him in basic terms that, you know, we are spiritual beings in a physical body corresponding in a material world. And we should be worry free. And the only worry that we make is that of which we make ourselves, you know? So, for me, when we talk about kind of this worldly life, I, I tend to try and be as stress-free as possible. You know, I'd rather be less stressed and more highly blessed, you know? That's good. And the way that we can do that is by tapping into, you know, our, our inner gift and, and that of which, you know, Allah has granted us, whatever it may be, your passion. You know, and that's why I will always say to someone, you know, who comes to me for advice is, you know, don't chase your pension, but chase your passion. You know, I know there are so many people that dislike their jobs and you know, dis- maybe dislike their jobs or dislike their lifestyle and change it. You need to change it. It's up to you. You have to change the way that you're living or you have to change your job to a point where you know that you're going to be doing something that you love day in, day out. And it's, it's about tapping into that inner gift because whatever you do, you know, externally, you know, whatever you're wearing or whatever it is, you're, imagine it as it, imagine it fully as a gift. You know, that, that outer wrapping is going to be, you know, dressed so nice with a ribbon and beautiful paper and everything on the outside material is really nice. But it's the inner, inner gift that you want to tap into and be able to, you know, capitalize on that and work on that. And that will be the, 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 the sweetness of the fruit that we can have day in, day out. And, and once you're doing that, you, you really don't have to be worried about a thing. You know, like, I would cut hair for free. I would teach people for free. I would do this flying, this, that, and that, but I would do it for free. But guess what? You need to be able to do it so well that they will pay you for it. Mm. And that's, that's passion. That's passion. And for me, passion stands for pass it on. What can you pass on? What can you contribute to society that Allah has given you to spread out that message. What is it within your your job title or whatever it is? It's not even a job. It's a lifestyle. It's something that you love. You breathe. You you know. You wake up and you think about and you you just enjoy it. You know that is a worry free life for me. That's powerful. Freeing your, freeing yourself from the shackles of society. Yeah, that's it. It's similar to what um, there was one statement in our last podcast of we of Hamza Zortis that a lot of people said that they were really inspired by it. And they messaged me personally, that like, that thing that he said was like, wow. And it was when he said that Allah talks about how 
you have all of these different things that you're a slave to and all of these different masters and so who is mm. the true winner the one who is a slave of loads of different things or the one who is a slave to just one and it's true it's true it? yeah that's true freedom he was saying yeah because you know everyone's I mean? a slave to something ultimately yeah, yeah definitely definitely like if you took hairdressing away from me i wouldn't be disappointed and i think that's where like you know, you could be a slave to that desire. Right. You know, yes, I am passionate about it, but at the same time, you know, if it got taken away all of a sudden, then it's something that I would have to accept and accept that it come from Allah, and that that is, that's it. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's like anything. You have a car gets taken away. Guess what? You have to deal with it, and you're gonna have to deal with it in the best way that you possibly yeah. can. And that comes through patience, and patience is not a, always something that you can be taught. You know, it's something that you have to grow, mm. grow with. How have you found, how do you train patients? Do you know what, it's, it's interesting. Um, and it's something that I've been trying to study recently because, you know, ultimately, when it comes to teaching someone a specific skill, you know, you can teach someone a skill. I can teach you how to be the best haircutter you can possibly be, but I can't necessarily teach you how to be patient. Do you know what I mean? It has to be something, you know, almost within you that you have to grow. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that there, there must be certain ways and exercises that you can become patient. But it has to come from, you know, exercising your consciousness levels to, to becoming patient. But something I want to work on, delivering. Similar to like, um, when I was having it, go ahead. I think, you know what, coming back to that, I think there is two ways in which you can manipulate human behavior and or, or two ways in which you can affect human behavior and one is to manipulate it and one is to inspire it and i think when it comes to kind of things like hard work things like integrity things like patience these are the things that you need to inspire people which will change their behavior as opposed to manipulating it if I stand here and say to you, look, you need to become more patient, that's a manipulation. You're not necessarily going to be patient. But what I can do is, within my character, show you a way of how I'm being to the point where you will actually go, you know what, I, I want to be like that. Mm. And that's, an, that's inspiring as opposed mm. to manipulation. So it's that manipulation vs. inspiration kind of theme and exercise. So powerful because... You're making me think in ways I haven't thought before. Like, the, the when you when you put it out like that, like, listen, I'm not here. To mind teach you. Madness, isn't it? Like inspiration. That if like when you put it like that, it's like that's so true because you are either when you're speaking to someone or when or when someone is speaking to you, you are normally either one of two. You're either inspired or manipulated. Or mm -hmm. when you're speaking to someone else, you're either inspiring them or manipulating them. And what you just said, the reason it hit me so hard is because I think I'm a manipulator. <laughs> I'm horrible. No, but like, I... I, I, I no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Um, not in the sense that, oh, I, I like go out and I'm trying to manipulate people, but perhaps my um, intention or my like... Um, passion for something will be so high that I just want the person to like understand where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. So instead of mm -hmm. being patient with them and like trying to show it for in a long term way, I just tell them this is how you should feel because I know it's right. Yes. Even though perhaps a lot of That sounds is to right. me That's like you're a boss. You're right. bossy. Right, you're the probably. The trait of a bo bossy person. Probably. But then here we go again. Here's another scenario. You have a boss and you have a leader. Mm. And what's the difference? A leader that does um, kind of what he leads with example as opposed to a boss will just tell people what to do and Precisely. perhaps not do it A himself. boss will tell you what to do. A leader will show you what to do and encourage you to do it with them. And that's powerful in it, enough in itself. Mm. And it comes back to what I said earlier and I'm going to come into contact now. And <laughs> what I mean is, you know, listen, I'm not going to tell you what to think, mm. but I am going to show you how to think. Mm. And that's the concept in which we deliver. So have a think about that. Challenge yourself. It's very powerful. And that goes for the listeners mm. as well. You know, challenge yourself you know, about how you should think as opposed to what to think. Highly blessed. You know, um, we went the, uh, oh, on like a Friday when I'm cutting up the um, freshly ground clips mm. and I'm like trying to make like short little like powerful snippets. It's going to be a lot here. Yeah, you have loads. It's good. Yeah, it's good. 
listen it's all for the listeners at the end of the day you know it's for it's for people that could be sitting there watching this and it could just be that one thing that you know sparks an interest and and, and sparks their ignition to chasing their passion and, and and finding something that they truly love doing it could be anything it could be any one of any one of these things that we say you know it could end up being a load of rubbish but the next podcast could be something that again sparks that ignition well that's that perfectly aligns with our kind of intentions here because while we, me and Sam or the correct grammar is actually Sam and I while Sam and I are not um, the best people in the world we do really promote self-growth don't we on this podcast and that's like one of the main things that we like to promote self-growth and so the things that you're saying and they're not just like you're not just talking for the sake of talking either like because you can tell because it's very very meaning, meaningful things and the things that you're saying are really really encompassed around self-growth which is what we try and promote but it's from a different angle because sometimes me and Sam might, we'll be talking on podcasts, promote yourself, and we'll agree with each other so much, which is beautiful. I mean, and, and yes, we have a lot of times where we disagree with each other, <coughs> Uber, um, but we, it's, which is beautiful, you know, agreeing and disagreeing. But a lot of the times we do agree with each other. And so it's interesting to have someone who I'm, who brings a, like, a completely different spin on it. I'm not saying I disagree with you, but I'm saying that you've uh, brought around a way of thinking that perhaps uh, we, uh, we haven't maybe discussed before. It's deeper, it's a little bit more intricate, isn't it? It is, it is. And it, and it makes I, a lot I, of sense. I, what it is, is I know the response of how powerful this podcast can be and how much it can affect people watching and listening. You know, to the point where I've cut hair in front of people and, you know, two days later, two weeks later, two months later, I've had people saying, you know, I saw you at that convention and I was really inspired. Thank you so much. You know, and, and, and that gratefulness will increase you. And Allah says that clearly in the Quran, you know. So what we're doing here, if it even if there's a thousand viewers and just one person takes something from this, then there's a benefit from that. And, you know, they'll be tremendously grateful and, you know, goes around in circles. Be blessed. Josh LaMonica, you are... The most um, requested. No way. Uh, yeah, yeah. You're the most requested, requested like what? comeback oh. person. I don't know what the word is, but guest. Like, yeah, you're, no, but requested you're the most requested guest to, guest come, to, back. to come back. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Sam. You know, comeback words. person. Most requested guest to come back. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. People will never you are forget than me as well. We'll bear that in mind. Yeah. We're gonna come into contact once more. It's no touching you down. Look. People will never forget uh, right, there how you make them feel. They won't forget, or you would you say, sorry, I missed a bit of it because I had someone come in contact one more time. Look at him in the eyes when he's talking to you. Give me a second. Listen, (laughs) people (laughs) will never forget how you make them feel. Josh LaMonica. It's true. It's very true. It's very true. It's very true. This has been a lovely podcast episode. Absolutely loving one. And um, dare I say, a lot more lovely than our um, first episode because I was able to chill and enjoy myself and really listen because last time perhaps because I was trying to produce it and stuff at the same time I wasn't able to really take in the stuff that you were saying and um, it was beautiful and I've learned so much about you and about your mindset and um, it's really done justice to how highly Sam speaks of you um, uh, when you're not in your absence um, and I've always believed him. I've not been like, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> but, but to experience it, to experience like a, a proper sit down chat, because even, you know, when we first met in Gambia, you know, this, uh, anytime I've met you, it's been in passing or we've been busy doing stuff. So to be able to sit with you, have a chat with you and not ha- have to focus on other things, it's been, it's been absolutely wonderful, man. It's been a proper pleasure, man. It's been, it's been my Thank pleasure. You. And um, bro, listen, you've been on the podcast twice and I would honestly say, please do at some point come back for a third time. Of course. And uh, inshallah, I'm, we're going to be heading to um, Dublin, I, I hope. Inshallah. Point, inshallah. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll be doing an episode in, out there. Glenn, well, really wants nice. to jump on. Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah, we should do that. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, well, inshallah, we'll sort that out. I will definitely nice, yeah. check out the check out new men's man stuff. Um, guys, this has been episode 35 of Freshly Grounded. We're nearing that 50. I've got my eyes on 50. Uh, inshallah. Please make dua for us. Um, if you want to follow uh, more of Josh's stuff, Head over on what are your socials, Josh? Josh, Insta, Insta, Insta. Yeah, the Instagram is Josh Lamonica, Menspire Salon, Menspire Academy. Perfect. Uh, with that being said, guys, this was episode 35. Assalamu alaikum. Peace Assalamu alaikum. out.